Welcome, welcome. God bless everyone. Peace of Christ to all who are here. God bless you all. We're here again, another week of the God Logic Project. Um, I apologize for missing you guys last week. It got a bit hectic for me, um, but we're back at it again. So we're here. We're not going anywhere. I want to thank you all for joining me as usual. And let's see if we can get some guests, some interesting guests this time to see if they'll come in and talk to us about our topic, whether or not Muhammad is within the religion of Abraham or not, as the Muslims claim. So this should be fun. This should be a good topic today. And we'll see the characters we get. All right. It's God. It's God. It's God. And here we are doing this right now. So I forget what week we're in. Are we in we in week five, six? I think we're in week six, if I'm not mistaken. But God bless everybody. Make sure you hit that like button. What's up, you guys? I'm on we're on YouTube live right now, Pope. So uh, I'm just putting a stream up there so that the Muslims can join. So I got I got the stream going on on Clubhouse so that people can come here and uh got the stream got the stream going on in other places as well but god bless you all what's up darian yo my guy man that's my little brother right there but yes it's good to see everybody good to see please everyone before we get started before we get all into this conversation please like love and react to the video so that the algorithm can get pushed and um you know this can pop up on on people's feeds and as a recommend recommendation and stuff like that so whether you're on facebook whether you're on youtube you guys know how we do it please smash that like button smash that love button react i don't care if you like or dislike whatever it is good attention bad attention is good attention still so um Yes, we need everybody to to hop on and like this before we get started and head on in here. We got people coming in here still. But yeah, I like this title. I like this title. Muhammad versus the religion of Abraham. I want to see if we'll get some people who can come up and explain that for us and see uh, and see how how they do. <laughs> see how they do what's going on everybody god bless you guys yes last week man um you know i was dealing with a lot i had a lot of errands to run and uh you know parking tickets to pay off <laughs> uh so i had to get some things in order i was just all over the place i wasn't at home at all i was doing all kinds of things so um but i'm here man i'm here i'm back i apologize to everyone for uh for missing is that mike oh How yes <laughs> i gotta let oh yes what's Hold going on, on i just you? caught you i just caught you <laughs> and you think you just started huh three minutes huh? yes sir yes sir <laughs> uh, i think you gotta mute uh youtube yeah i had a club pl log into youtube i was on mm -hmm. facebook and i saw your thing and there was a link so i clicked on the link and you know yeah everybody this is this is big mike this this man uh is the og at the park at set at in san diego balboa you know what i'm saying he's he's always encouraging us over there um they also set up a booth where they uh they witness and evangelize right Mike? oh yeah 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 I'm trying to figure out how, which way to move so i'm gonna speak yeah 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 we've been doing that for 10 years now uh, I started with uh, Billy Stewart. He started well before me, and then uh, I came along because I was looking for. I've been handing out tracks and whatnot. I started in 1980, passing out tracks, and I'll tell you, I was scared, scared. What are you gonna do to me? Whoa! What, what are you gonna think? All this stuff, you know. These are fears, <laughs> normal fears. That's that, right. Most everybody goes to. I don't know about you know. I can't speak for everybody, but I'll say for myself. So, but I, I wanted to be obedient to God. 
so I got myself a bunch of chick tracks, right? Chick tracks. Everybody heard chick tracks. If you never, yep. they got a they got a publication site. Very good tracks. I started handing out those, and uh, I, then I used to get those dollar bills, fake dollar bills, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> one side has scripture, one side looks like a real thing. I'd crumple yep. it up. See, I'd crumple yep. it up. <laughs> 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 Laugh my head off watching people pick it. Oh, it's a dollar. It's a dollar. Ooh, you know, and it's, it's funny. But you know, oh, man. but the seriousness thing is, is that we need to um, get that word out because God's God's serious. God's not playing games. Hey, Mike, you got you know, it. Sounds like your TV's a little loud in the background. Oh yeah, let me turn the TV off. Mm -hmm. Watching Fox News, one of my favorite shows, you know. Yes, Thank you, Brother Scott. But anyhow, um, yeah, so God is serious, and he wants to save everybody. He really does, because God is a great God. His love is bigger than the universe, you know. But he also meant what he said when he said, you know, that he's angry at the wicked every day. And I'll, I'll admit, I, I, I've done some... Uh, Notorious things, I'll just say. I mean, you know, sin is sin, but I think you know there, there's sexual sin which affects the body. You know, people get AIDS and other things, STDs, because of their sexual immorality. You know, so there's various things going on in the world that you know consequences for sin. Let's just say that consequences for sin, and we're gonna right. stay away from that. So God has delivered me from a lot of things. And he's moving in my life. And then, like I said, I started in 1980, but it was uh, in the 2000, let's see, about 2010, 13, 14, somewhere in that neighborhood when I met Billy in the park. And then one thing led to another. And of course, Billy's semi retired, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> he's 86 years old now. Come on. I don't think he's ever yeah. been back in the park. Yeah. You know, so that's, so that's, the, that's that real. That's that real, um, that real OG witnessing, man. Like I, I really have respect for, for, for you guys, and I really love you guys for being there, being a presence there. You know what I'm saying? You guys, you guys started it. You know what I'm saying? So and, uh, we can only hope to yeah. hold it up. Yeah, because I was praying for somebody to come along like Anthony, you know, because we we've, we've had our talks with the Muslim and stuff, and I, and I could get. You know, I, I'm I'm like, you know, there's a good guy, the good cop and the bad cop. I'm, I, you know, we got a team, me and Kevin Jones. I'm the bad cop. <laughs> okay, so but Kevin, he don't like to argue. He really doesn't like to argue. So, so you, so Anthony or Avery, you've seen some of my signs that I, I put away, but I'll bring them out now and then when Kevin's not, not around. <laughs> you know, and it really does get the. The Muslims in an uproar, you know. Uh, I had a Muslim call the cops on me one time, so you know. So That's how they called, do. Yeah, That's you know. That's how they do. So, but we've had, we get we engage in all kinds of conversations, but you know the evidence is there. You got to remember that the Bible. If every Christian would remember, the Bible is is the only book in the whole wide world that's architecturally, or archaeology and historically uh, founded. You can look at our uh, history. You can look at archaeology, and you'll find things there that are found in the Bible. And that's what a lot of archaeologists do. They say, oh, this city is supposed to be over here. Let me go check it out. And guess what? They found it. They found the city exactly. of Nineveh. You know? <laughs> and that's <laughs> not something that they can do for the Quran. The, the no, amazing thing about it is that we have, like you said, archaeological evidence, um, historical yes. evidence, that actually backs up the narratives in the Bible. We have okay. this in our hands in our museums today, and sure. so this is why we we don't we have nothing to fear in these conversations. Like all we have to do is present the information, present the truth, plant the seed, and God will do the rest. You know, God will call Amen. that person, Amen. whoever it is. Amen. Yep. So, Big Mike, thank you so much for, for showing up. And this was a pleasure. This was a surprise. I'm going to try to get some Muslims up here. Yeah, get some people I, on there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah see if yeah. they join us. All right, my friend. Right. I'll be listening. I'll be listening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love you, my brother. Did you want me to sign out or just uh, listen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and um, just watch sign on the out. stream. And then, yeah. How do I, do, how do I sign out? Let me click on this thing.
Okay. You, uh, you, you should have an option that says leave studio. All right, there we go. Yep, there he goes. What's up, little bro? Good to see you guys. But yeah, guys, um, we don't usually have our our uh, number one troll here, man. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's funny. Only one question, man. Hey, we've been actually uh we've been actually going around asking that question, Cook. Who wrote the Quran? Anthony has a a video up right now. I gotta download it and put it on the channel. But he has a video up right now where he is literally asking every Muslim, man, who wrote the Quran? Man, who if who if Muhammad didn't write it, if the man was illiterate, man, he was illiterate, he couldn't read it, right? Man, who wrote the Quran? Man, was it Uthman? Was it Ibn Thabit? It was it uh, well, you know, was it Ibn Masood? Man, who wrote this Quran? You know, <laughs> and they can't answer the question, man. They can't answer the question. They cannot answer the question. Uh, Pope said, "I thought you was gonna do the Gnostic Gospels versus the Quran. Now that would be funny. That'll be a uh, that's a different topic. I'll def we should definitely do that, Pope. But you got to come on with me, man. You can't leave me up here by myself. We got to do that together. Um, yeah. That, that another interesting topic, you guys, would be to do um, the Gnostic Gospels versus the Quran. And you guys already know why, because of how the Quran copies." things from, you know, the infancy gospel and the, and the gospel of Thomas and things of this nature. Uh, hold on one second. My battery's about to die. So the Gnostics, the Gnostic gospels versus the Quran. Al-Quran. <laughs> yeah, I got my people coming in here, man. So it's good to see everybody. It's good to see everybody. Um, I was going to I'm going to ask, you know, if we could get a Muslim to show up because uh, I'm not allowing the same trolls. on. I, I, I want some actual, uh, you know, I don't know if I can say worthy, but, you know, just some people who's worth the conversation, at least, man, not not the usual tropes. You know what I'm saying? We want to know if Muhammad really traces back to Abraham, not only biologically but theolo theologically theologically we want to know does muhammad's theology does his belief and teaching on god match up with the god of abraham yahweh of the old testament and the new testament that's what we want to figure out and so one thing that was uh pointed out to me by a brother that uh we call dl on clubhouse he pointed out to me the fact that the Quran never gives a command or says anything about circumcision. It doesn't. But as we all know, the sign of the covenant that God gave to Abraham, the sign of that covenant was circumcision, right? And you guys all know the, the, the common uh, terrible arguments that Muslims bring up, that Paul you know, taught against the law and, you know, tried to stop people from getting circumcised, preached against circumcision and the law of Moses, you know, and so therefore he's a false teacher was corrupting the, 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 the message of Jesus, right? If that's the case, and, and that's a reason to go after Paul, then where does Muhammad teach circumcision? Better yet, was Muhammad circumcised himself? Was Ma was Muhammad did Muhammad get the snip? And if he did, for any Muslim that's probably in the chat right now, can you show me a single reference, a Quran verse, a hadithis, any hadithis? Make sure it's Sahih, not a footnote. If you got a footnote, make sure the footnote is Sahih. I don't I do not accept Hassan footnotes. I need sahi footnotes. If you have a sahi footnote or a sahi hadithis, I need to see that reference that says Muhammad was circumcised. <laughs> That's what I want to see. If the teaching of circumcision is so important that Paul saying 
that those who require circumcision for salvation, that they should, be, should have, they should be castrated. If it's so important, if that is a false teaching, right? Then I need to know where does Allah teach circumcision? Where does Allah give that command? <laughs> Five points per side for a Sahi footnote from Muhammad. <laughs> oh, shoot. <clears throat> Man, you guys are killing me, man. But that's that's what I, that's what I want to know first off. First off, I want to know. Uh, <laughs> first off, I want to know if um, if Muhammad was circumcised. And the other thing I want to know is if Allah Himself gives the command for circumcision, because that's important if you're talking about Abrahamic religion and you know tying in with the everlasting covenant, right? So that's what we have here. We got right to say, you sound like a Muslim, Avery. I need only Sahih, not Hassan. <laughs> no, for real. I can't accept anything else. I cannot accept anything else. But that's true, righteous. Even Hassan is still accepted, obviously. Hassan means good. And Daif, they cannot get rid of Daif. They cannot get rid of Daif. So, I want to know, was Muhammad circumcised? If he, if he wasn't circumcised, take him out of the Abrahamic religion. If Allah didn't teach circumcision, I, I don't want anything to do with Allah. He's not, it has nothing to do with, with, a, with the religion of Abraham. It has nothing to do with the covenant that God promised Abraham and his descendant that it's through Isaac that it will be his descendant. We have another guest up here. What's going on, Andrew? How you doing, man? Your mic is muted. I'll be honest with you. I did not mean to join. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you accidentally hit the link? Yeah. Okay. Did you want I've to never, Yeah, I just wanted to watch. I've never... Yeah, I've never done this, so my bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good. Yeah, so the, the, did you come from Clubhouse? No, Facebook. Oh, just oh Facebook. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You could you could exit out. Yeah, you could leave the studio and you could just watch the stream, bro. But yeah, sorry, hey, sorry about that. <laughs> you're welcome, though. As, as always, <laughs> it's all good. Take care, my brother. Thanks for right. uh, thanks for watching, man. I really appreciate it. Of course, man. God bless. I love what you're doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. But yeah, so um, uh. In dealing with the, the the covenant that was given to Abraham, I've heard some really, um, dare I say, stupid, stupid arguments coming out of this. Some very, very stupid arguments coming out of this man. And uh, I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> yeah, I got I, I got him confused with you, Andrew. <laughs> they tried to say. They tried to say, guys, that, that Ishmael was given a covenant. He was given, he was part of the covenant because he was circumcised. So what they're trying to do now, I don't know where this apologetic or polemic um, started, where it originates. But what they're saying now is it's, it's getting popular, this argument, on Clubhouse at least, is that uh, in the beginning of Genesis 17, where God is laying out the promises to Abraham and what he's going to do through his offspring, that that is Abraham's own covenant. That that is Abraham's own covenant that everyone uh, is a part of, that everyone receives, even Ishmael, because it just says offspring. But later on in the chapter, when it specifically mentions Isaac, that covenant is for Isaac, not Abraham. So what they're doing is, is that they're, they're separating the covenant that's given to, to Abraham through Isaac. They're separating it and saying Abraham has his own covenant while Isaac has his own covenant. <laughs> Ain't that the dumbest thing? <laughs> Oh, Lord. We have another guest up here. We got Anders. Anders, how you doing? Yo, what's up? Peace of what's Christ. How are you? 
Peace of Christ, my brother. I'm good. I'm blessed, highly favored, man. Um, I, let me let me ask you: Are you joining from YouTube, Facebook, or? Um, I'm joining from YouTube. Yes. YouTube. Okay, for sure. So you so you're a subscriber? Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Well, hey, hey, thank you so much for for the support. I I appreciate you. Uh, if you have any thoughts on on the subject, you can share it, man. Um, I'm waiting on Muslims to come in. I'm killing time, so. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I had a question about like Mark thirteen thirty two. I know the sure. refutation. I'm just I just need to take notes, to write it down. So could you like tell me when a Muslim says like nor the sun, like how do I refute that? Yeah, sure. So there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways. Um, number one, um, this is what you can notice. Notice how Jesus, when he says, uh, no man knows, right? No one knows. That's human. That's humankind. No man knows. Mm -hmm. Then he goes up a step. Neither the angels. And then he goes up another step saying, nor the son, right? But the father only. Now, notice how. Notice the levels here. Jesus puts himself above mankind and above angelic kind. You notice that? Yeah, that makes him God, right? Exactly. Because mankind and, and angelic kind elsewhere in the Bible encompasses creation. That's how creation is described. When it says, you know, when it, when it puts angels and man in the same sentence like that, it's describing creation. Um, let me see if I could get you that reference because uh, there's a, a couple examples of this. Let's see if I can remember. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. In Revelation, I believe it's Revelation 22. Basically, I think it's verses. Um, I, actually, I don't remember the verses, but somewhere <laughs> near Dang, the end of Revelation. Me, man. That's crazy. You got my hopes up. Yeah, but I, I think it's Revelation 22, 8 through 9. I, I think. I don't know if that's the right. But anyways, basically what happens yeah, is... John, like, uh, he worships, he tries to worship the angel, and the angel says, don't do that because I'm a fellow servant. So yes, I see what yes. you're saying. No, yes, but so I, I want to get you specifically where, uh, ah, here it is. Okay. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. Let me pull it up on my, uh, my screen. Right, I got it. All right. You got it? What does it say? All right. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, like men sentenced to death, to death because we have become a, spec, a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. Exactly. Now, what is the world made of according to this verse? Um, I don't know. All right. So re read that again. The whole read thing? That again. Yeah, uh, the half of it, the half part. Where is where okay. it starts about ages, when it mentions the world? Okay, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. Right. So, because we have become a spectacle to the world, and mm -hmm. then it specifically says to angels. Oh, and to, to angels men. and to men. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So the world is made up of angels and mankind. Right. That's the yes. world. That's creation. Right. Uh, the Greek word, I think, would be cosmos. And so Jesus puts himself above creation. He says, no man knows, nor, an mm. nor the angels. Right. Then he levels up, nor the son, but the father only. So even in this context, even with this verse alone in Jesus's descriptions, the levels, he proves that he's divine by putting himself above creation. Now, I would ask the Muslim if they believe that. If not, then they need to quit quoting this verse because it proves Jesus' divinity. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is number one. That's, a, that's one way you can go at it. Okay? That Jesus is showing how he is different from creation. He's not a part of the created order, according to this verse. He's not. Right? Mm -hmm. Now. Let's go through the explanation of what Jesus is saying about his quote unquote knowledge. So the argument goes like this, that when Jesus is using the word no here in regards to himself. He's not he's not making a statement of ignorance. He's not saying that he doesn't know as in ignorance, but he's saying that he's using the word no in a declarative sense. Yes, meaning he I've heard this before. Yeah. Right. So he doesn't make known the day or the hour uh, that's not for him to do, 
but it's for the father to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we get this, um, this use of the word. No, when you go to first Corinthians chapter two, so let's go there really quick so you can get this noted down. Yeah. I think the Greek is, it's like, uh, wait, Dan or something. Or yes. Like yes. There's two different Greek words used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the same so, root word, right? Yep. Same root word, but a, a different form. Mm -hmm. And so in first Corinthians chapter two, we have Paul saying, I decided to know nothing when I came among you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. First Corinthians chapter two, verse two. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you get there. So I know that you're so that we're together. And then I know the second verse that you use is like Acts 1, 7. That's but, right. We'll go there next. All right. Yeah. So I'm there. Okay, good. Go ahead and read that for, for the for the viewers here. All right. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and crucified. First of all, we, hold on. We got a hater in, in, the, in the audience here, uh, some heretic named Shimonian. Mods, mods, y'all need to block this guy. Y'all need to block <laughs> this hater. <laughs> well, it is for everyone that it is. Okay. Yeah, so we got this hater in here, man. Hey, Maz, I need y'all to watch this guy, all right? Watch <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Shimon. Who, who, who the heck is some Shimon anyway? Some Assyrian heretic. All right, so <laughs> right, so right. So we see how Paul uses it, right? And so we see in the Bible, even the word no is not a statement of ignorance, just declaration to make known, right? To reveal. Um, and so like you said, going to Acts chapter 1, verse 7, verse 6 and 7, we see Jesus asked the same question, but he doesn't say, I told you guys, I don't know, or we're not supposed to know. He says, this is not for you to know. And then he emphasizes the times and the seasons that the Father has fixed by his authority, right? This is for the Father to reveal, not for him to reveal on his own on his own doing but he received he receives that command to reveal it from the father mm -hmm. Make sense so far mm -hmm. yes okay so he's asked the same question in the book of acts and he says it's not for you to know he doesn't say us and the word that's used there for no is different than the one he uses in mark mm -hmm. it's different now the question would be then, because now somebody might say, well, why does Jesus include himself? Why, why does he say, nor the angels, nor the son, uh, or, or mankind? He says them all. You can't just rip how the word no is used somewhere else in the Bible and just apply it here. Yes, we can. And we're not just ripping it out. We're using it in the context of the person that's speaking in comparison to who he mentions this with. So, for example, there's a reason why Jesus is saying that nor the son. Because for him, it's not for him to reveal this. It's not for him. He knows it. He's all knowing. It's not for him to reveal this, but for the father to reveal it. And whenever the father reveals something, whenever he makes known something, he makes it known through the son. Hmm. Every time. Right. For example, John 1, 18, John chapter one, verse 18. Mm -hmm. It says that it's the son or the only God that's at the father's side, he makes him known, mm -hmm. right? Or in Hebrews chapter one, that it's through the son that God is speaking through these last days. So when God is revealing these things, God is revealing through the son and the spirit. Okay. All right. I've never looked at it that way. So that's, I'm glad I came up here because I knew about the first Two, like things that you said but mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't think about it like that way yeah no problem bro no problem so so i want to emphasize this point too so that's the reason why jesus doesn't make it known the reason why the angels and the and the humans don't make it known is because they they don't know they literally don't know they're ignorant of it but jesus is not ignorant of it it's just not time for him to reveal it um mm -hmm. And we know this throughout the rest of the scriptures that says that Jesus is all-knowing. 
period. Mm -hmm. Jesus is all knowing. So we have uh, John chapter 16, mm -hmm. verse 25 to 31. They say that it, it says Jesus knows all things. No, now you're speaking plainly. Now we know that you know all things. We don't need to question you about anything. And you want to know what his response is? He says, now do you believe? Now do you believe what, Mr. Muslim? What is he affirming? That he knows all things and that he's speaking clearly. That he doesn't need to be questioned. That's what he's affirming. He knows all things. That's John chapter 16, verses 25 to 31. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. I, I had another question, too. This is sort yeah. of a personal. What uh, what denomination are you, if you have, like, any? Because I, uh, I've i watched, like, basically almost all your videos, but you haven't really talked about that much that I've yeah. seen. So, Yeah, um, I, I guess if I were to fall into a denomination, I would fall into a Protestant as a protestant um but i'm currently like researching and looking at church history and uh, mm -hmm. looking at the other denominations seeing what they have to say and learning their creeds and stuff like that so i'm kind of afloat at at this moment right now but okay I'm, I'm with all my brothers and sisters in christ okay and another question that's sort of personal how long have you been doing apologetics because i know you've just sort of in a sense just started going to yeah. Balboa Park and like setting up a tent and stuff, which is really good. Yeah. Um, but like, how long have you been doing apologetics? Uh, brother, um, I've been doing, I, I want to say, man, uh, publicly, publicly doing apologetics, publicly doing apologetics. Um, that just started, uh, I want to say probably four months ago, five months ago. Because mm -hmm. uh, I started on, like on the app and Clubhouse and stuff like that, um, yeah. But as far as like being into it, it's been a couple years now. It's been a okay. couple years, but I, you know, I never came out as an apologist like that. You know, just mm -hmm. debating online, Facebook stuff like that, um, inviting Jehovah's Witnesses to my house and doing Bible studies with them, <laughs> yeah. and then getting on the blacklist. Never seen them again, <laughs> bro. Man, I miss them. I miss my Jehovah's Witness friends. But yeah, so publicly a few months, but like, you know, online and stuff like that, it's been a few years since I've been into it. Pro okay, so I'll, I'll probably say since I was about 20. I'm 27 now, so I'd say since I was about 20, 20 years old, that's when that's when it started for me. Wow, okay, yeah, I, I've just, if if I want to learn something, that I can't find inf information for. I either watch Sam or I watch you. So I really Whoa. appreciate everything that you've done and all the content that you've put out. It, That's may crazy. God bless you. Wow. Thank you, man. God, God bless you. Stay away from Sam though. <laughs> Stay away from Sam. He's uh, you know, it'll drive you crazy, man. I don't know if you could really take from him. Um, you know, people like, I guess some people think that he teaches me, like he gives me some of his lessons just cause I featured him on my channel or whatever. I was really like, Falling asleep when he was on the channel, though. So, uh, this guy is, is he's a loser. <laughs> oh, wow. See, look at him. Look at this hater. Man, oh this God. guy is a loser if he listens to at God Logic Apologetics. Look at the <laughs> hater, haters in the club, y'all. Good Lord. Have mercy on Sam's soul. God save him from his heresy and from his haterism. But yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on. Listen, bro, uh, my contacts are, are in my description. Like if you have an Instagram or anything like that or Facebook, like I'm, right. I'm, I'm, uh, you can message me whenever and we can chat it up, call me or, or whatever. You can hop on my streams like this and just we just talk and ask questions. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. God bless. Yeah. yeah God bless you, bro. All right. All right. Yeah, guys. Um, if anybody wants to come up on the stream, man, and, and, and share how this religion is absolutely outside of the realm of what Abraham gives um, and teaches and uh, what we see in the Torah and the Tanakh, the Old Testament, the prophets, come on up and share it. I don't mind. It's an open field today. <laughs> and his apologetics. Awesome, man.
That's crazy. Sam, if you want to come up too, my brother, I guess, I mean, I'm not, you can come, I guess, if you want to come up. I, I mean, whatever. Look, here you go, man. This is if you want to come up and join. Oh, now that's scary. Hey, friend. <laughs> What's going on, my guy? Uh, I'm, I'm having a rough day. It was my cheat day and I went overboard. And so pray for me to recover because, you know, these cheat days, uh, it's not a cheat meal. It's a cheat day. And uh, after I'm done, <laughs> I can hardly move and breathe. And I start begging God for mercy to give me self-control. But, yeah, I don't want to take too much of your time. And you're more than qualified. All joking aside, <clears throat> I pray God really strengthens you and fills you and preserves you to keep growing because you're going to be the next generation to glorify Jesus Christ if the Lord tarries. So, man, I'm, may God almighty floods you and save you from temptation because i'm going to tell you something from personal experience god has blessed you with a intelligent mind you're passionate for jesus and it sucks that you're also good looking <laughs> because why satan knows our weakness and he's going to throw people in your way to cause you to stumble mm -hmm. so avoid our pitfalls avoid our mistakes <clears throat> guard yourself keep yourself pure don't rush into marriage because what will happen? Satan knows you're young. Satan knows that you'll, you have desires unless God has called you to become celibate like Paul, which is a gift. That's your gifting. Glory to God. Walk in it. And he will bring you Jezebels. And if you're not guarded, they will be sent to destroy your life or at least hinder you. Because I know some brothers who made a mistake that I did and are suffering currently in bad marriages. Be wise as a snake, but harmless as a dove. Guard yourself, brother, because Satan's going to now target you. This man is dangerous. He's mighty in the spirit. He loves Jesus. He's destroying my kingdom. I got to distract him or take him out of the picture. So be wise, honestly. Be wise, yes, brother. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, All Sam. Right. I really appreciate your encouragement, your prayers. You know it literally means the world to me, brother. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I thank God for you. I wish yeah. I was your age with what I know now, but experience comes from maturity but i want to ask something uh yeah. you said what's their latest argument uh, uh, a, yeah, yeah. So, so they're, they're, they're splitting the the covenant in Ju in genesis 17. so they're saying that the first part of genesis where god just mentions how he'll bless him through the offspring and stuff like that that that's the first covenant that's given to abraham specifically while later on in Genesis, when it specifically mentions Isaac, that's the second covenant given specifically to Isaac, not to Abraham. All right. Well, go with that. Say then it has nothing to do with Ishmael either then, right? Right. Right. Not not Isaac's. But they'll say they'll say that no, even Abraham's, because if it's mm -hmm. Abraham's covenant for his descendants, plural, then it's not limited or specific to Ishmael. So it has nothing to do with Ishmael either. Right. 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 You see, I understand right. what I'm getting because they're saying, yeah. well, that's a general covenant, meaning for his general descendants, right? Abraham's mm -hmm. covenant is for all his descendants, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that yep. what they're saying? Yep, that's what they're saying. Okay. All right, let's run with that. So then that means you can't limit it to Ishmael, and it must not include prophets because if this promise given to Abraham is for all his descendants, then that means all his descendants should have had prophets sent to them. Hmm. Not just quote unquote Ishmael. So what about the six other sons of Abraham? Right. Where were their prophets? When were they sent? And right. who were they sent to? I mean, you see, I, that's kind of stupid. And then I would turn it against them, not saying that you need me to, but I'm saying because I wish a Muslim would bring this up because then I would say, all right, so then is Ishmael is so insignificant and he's not that important that God didn't deem to make a personal covenant with Ishmael, but he made a personal covenant with Isaac and Jacob. Wow. Mm. So Ishmael wasn't that great because wow. God makes a personal covenant with Abraham. Then he makes a personal covenant with Isaac. Then with Jacob, but nothing with Ishmael. Right. Out. <laughs> Booyah shaka. Booyah shaka. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You see my point? So that yeah. argument ends up proving that Ishmael is insignificant. <laughs> let no, alone you know, the fact that they can't hilarious. prove that. Yeah, I mean, let alone that they can't prove that Ishmael is a physical descendant of Muhammad. So put that aside. 
And interestingly, the reason why I say his other sons, because in Genesis 25, Abraham had six sons with Keturah. Mm -hmm. One of them was Median, which then explains, this is the, see, this is the beauty of the Bible. One author, the Holy Spirit, using different human authors and guiding them in such a way to communicate God's will in human language perfectly. And there's this what we call intertextuality. You ever wonder why Zipporah in Exodus 4, 24 on knew that when God came to actually kill Moses right after commissioning him, she knew that God was upset because their sons had not been circumcised and she knew to circumcise the sons and that appeased God. And then secondly, why, if you go to Exodus 18, Moses would take advice from his father-in-law, Jethro, who was a priest of Median. You ever wonder why that was? I did wonder why. I, oh, really? I didn't have an I idea. Know. Okay, you know why? Why? Because Median was the son of Abraham. That means Median was uh, Isaac's brother, uh, which means Median would have known of the sign of the covenant, yeah. which is circumcision. Which means that Jethro knew the true God of Abraham because he's a descendant of Median, son of Abraham, which is why Moses accepted his advice and why Zipporah knew that she and Moses were in violation because good. her, being a Medianite, knew that Abraham, the father of Median, her ancestor, required all his male descendants to be circumcised. Yes. And she was complicit with Moses in ignoring that command. That is good, Sam. <laughs> So, and it's 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 crazy how that it all ties in. These these details show up later. It gives you reasons why certain reactions of people are happening. That makes complete sense. I I didn't know that. I didn't pay attention. I didn't look to pay attention to that. That's so I mean, now now you see why I'm bringing it up in the context of this covenant. So if the covenant is for all his descendants and includes the six other sons, so that means Median and Medan, all of them. There's like six of them. I haven't memorized their names, but. They should all have had prophets arise from their seed, right? Yeah, for sure. Because they're saying, well, if, if this is the covenant that includes Ishmael, and there yeah. God honored Ishmael, gave him a prophet, then what about the six other sons? Exactly. They should all have prophets sent to them, laws, books, and given to them. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's ridiculous. And then to then really <laughs> stick the fork in it, what you then say is, so then God deemed Isaac and Jacob important enough to make a personal covenant with each of them, but not with Ishmael. Mm. <laughs> what do you make, man? What do we have a question here? Do you want me to just take a second? Because I got to leave in a minute. I'm going to interview a convert from Islam, and I don't want to rain on your parade. I pray God brings you thousands to watch your live stream, and I pray that your ministry will attract hundreds of thousands of subscribers and preserve you and all you young lions of the faith. But you have someone asking about who is that prophet of John 121? You want me to tackle real quick? Yeah, do, do it, Sam. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Now, he's asking, John 1, 21, which is 19 to 21, a group of Jews sent by the Pharisees ask John the Baptist, are you the Christ? He says, no. He goes, well, are you Elijah? He says, no. Are you that prophet? He says, no. So there are three figures. So who's that prophet? Now, I'm assuming the person asking is a Muslim. It always baffles me why a Muslim would quote this passage because this is the same chapter where John introduces Jesus as the eternal creator yep. who is personally distinct from God the Father but an eternal fellowship with the Father. The one who created all things, gives life to all things, who is the true light that brings true spiritual illumination that entered the world by becoming flesh to redeem it. You sure you want to quote that chapter? But then what blows me away more is they stop at 21, but then they don't read John the Baptist's answer when John the Baptist says that he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness, mm -hmm. prepare the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah announced. So then they don't read verse 23 of John 1, where John the Baptist says, I am the voice that Isaiah said would shout out in the wilderness, preparing people for the coming of Jehovah God. And then they don't read the rest of the chapter where John the Baptist says that Lord God, Jehovah God, that I'm preparing the people for is Jesus Christ, whom later on he says, here's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's God's son and the Holy Spirit descends upon him in visible form and bodily shape like a dove. And he's the one who baptized the Holy Spirit, all of which the Old Testament attributes to God. What do I mean? 
said it kind of fast, but let me break it down. In the Old Testament, God and God alone, only God, pours out the Holy Spirit, gives the Holy Spirit to those who turn to him, and immerses, baptizes people in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. But John says, the Baptist, in John 1, 32, 33, that God the Father says, the one you see the Holy Spirit descend and reign, uh, remain on, when you see him come down visibly as a dove, he is the one who baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit, something that the Old Testament ascribes only to the true God. And yet Jesus is not the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit comes down upon him, and he's the one who will immerse you in the Holy Spirit. Now this destroys modalism. And the one telling John this is God the Father. So Jesus is not the Father. Mm -hmm. The Father is not the Spirit because the Father said the Spirit will come down upon him. And Jesus will baptize in the Spirit. So if the Father is not the Spirit and Jesus is not the Father and Jesus is not the Spirit, there is your Trinity in that chapter. Yeah. So more, moreover, just real quickly, and I'm going to come back to talk about who the prophet is. You see again in John 1, 23, it says, I am that voice. Shouting yep. in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, well, you yep. go to Isaiah 40, verse 3 to 5, and that Lord whom this voice was to prepare for is Jehovah God. Yep. And John tells you, Jesus is the one that I've been sent to prepare. So help me with logic because you have God's logic. <laughs> if John the Baptist is the voice of Isaiah 40, verse 3, where the prophet Isaiah, 700 years before the birth of our Lord Jesus, announced, that someone would be in the wilderness, a herald, an emissary, an envoy, preparing the people, telling them, prepare, Jehovah's coming. Make a highway for our God, and all flesh shall see the glory of Jehovah. And John fulfills that. But then John says, the one I'm preparing you for is Jesus. Now, wouldn't that mean that the conclusion is, Jesus is the Jehovah God who became flesh that John the Baptist, as the voice of Isaiah, was sent to prepare for? That is a reasonable conclusion, Sam, based on the simple logic here. Hallelujah. So this is the one you want to quote in Asif Dawood. Let Hamza of uh, <clears throat> lion sissies be more of a man than me. Contact me. In fact, Asif, uh, here I'm now recorded. I call out Hamza and all his little jihadi girls. Contact me. I'll take them all at one time, and God bears witness. I'll take Hamza, Ijaz, all of them by myself, if they're more men than Aisha was, to contact me on my Skype or go stream yard. I'll take them all. And I'm not lying. God bear witness. I don't follow Muhammad or his fake God. I serve the God of truth. So Asif, if you're more men than Aisha, join them and contact me, and I promise you, I will do to you what Jesus already did to Muhammad. He crushed Muhammad on his feet. I'll crush you under my feet by the power of Jesus Christ. So let's see if you guys are more men than Aisha was. Finally, brother, who is that prophet? Can I finish it? I'm sorry, brother. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm man. I think yeah. World War III here. <laughs> yeah, do your thing. Let me finish it. I, go, I love you, man. See, why you do this to me? I love you. I already, it's a cheat day. I already <laughs> stuffed myself like a cow. Now I got to go walk eight miles to keep my weight down with your prayers. Self-discipline. I'm already <laughs> animated and my blood is boiling. Yeah, I got you hyped. <laughs> yeah. And so Asa wants to bark like Aisha. He's not man enough. He's a coward, spineless. So let him keep barking. Now let's finish it. John 1. Now, guys, notice this is the passage. And Muslims want to quote to prove that another prophet was to come. And that prophet is Muhammad. But see, they don't read too carefully. Why? Because the Jews asked the John, are you the Christ? He said, no. Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you the prophet? He said, no. By asking John the Baptist if he's that prophet, proves Muhammad is a false prophet of faith, and he cannot be that true prophet. Why is that? Do you wonder why? Why is that so? Because if the prophet is not an Israelite, because they say from among your brothers, and the brothers means someone outside the nation, right? That's what they yep. say, right? Yep. If the prophet wasn't an Israelite, then why did the Jews ask John an Israelite if he was that prophet? Mm -hmm. Which means the Jews knew that the prophet to come must be an Israel Israelite. So when it says from your own brothers, means from one of your brother tribes. So he has to be an Israelite. He cannot be from outside the nation. So exactly. to quote the Jews, asking John if he's that prophet, these Jews now buried Islam because it proved that prophet to come cannot be Arab. He has to be an Israelite from one of the tribes of Israel. So are you sure you want to go there? 
<laughs> so now let's wrap it up finally. To quote the opinions of Jews who are not inspired, who are not prophets or messengers, who had mistaken views, and base your theology on this shows how shaky the foundation your theology rests upon. Why? Because these Jews were not inspired, they were not prophets, and they too had a hard time understanding the Old Testament, just like Christians today who have the same New Testament still have a hard time fully understanding how Jesus will return physically bodily to the earth. And it's not the only group of Jews. You had the Essenes who are credited with producing the Dead Sea Scrolls. Most scholars believe that the Jews that broke away from Jerusalem and lived in the Dead Sea area were actually the Essenes. If you read their writings, they're expecting a priestly Messiah from Aaron, a Davidic Messiah, a royal Messiah from David, and a prophet. So notice, this group of Jews expected two messiahs and a prophet. These other Jews expected Elijah, Messiah, and a prophet. But then you go to rabbinic Talmudic sources, and there in the Talmudic sources, they too are waiting for two messiahs, Messiah ben Joseph, Mashiach ben Yosef, and Messiah, son of David, Mashiach ben David, and Messiah, son of Joseph, will be killed in the battle, and then Messiah, son of David, will resurrect him to fulfill Zechariah 12.10, where in the Talmud, when it says they shall look on me whom they pierced, the rabbis say that is referring to Messiah, son of Joseph, being killed in battle. Mm. So the Jews are all, all over the map. Why are you going to appeal to them to see what the Old Testament says about how many individuals God will send? They can be right. They can be wrong. What you need to do is go and quote me Jesus and his followers as filled with the Spirit to see if they agree with the Jews, the prophet is someone different from the Christ. No, they don't agree, because in that very Gospel of John, Jesus is said to be both the Christ and the prophet, showing the Jews yes. are wrong in thinking that Christ was different from the prophet. Now, where do they think that? Can you open up John 6, 14 for us? John I can. 6. Also, Sam, you said you have to go somewhere? Do you, like, you actually have to? I've got about 10 more minutes, brother. But, yeah, if you let me know in advance, I'll be more than happy to join you. But I already scheduled. This brother's schedule is tight. He's going to share his testimony, how he returned okay. to the faith. Yeah, that's important. That's, that's good. Cause... So that's good. But, yeah, next time let me know. I'll be more than happy. And then I don't want to come and just take over because I want you to shine. It's your season. God perfect you and use you. We're getting old. We're going to eventually disappear if the lord tarries so i want god to work through you sam sam this is this is god working for me when you hop on and you give this lesson this this stuff this meat i i sit i know when to sit quiet and learn and absorb you know what i'm saying so i'm Lord, grateful yeah. when you hop on with little time that you have seriously okay so so what was tuesday yes, give me a day in advance let me know i'll come and we'll uh, get get them lined up we'll do it so yes sir, yes, sir. We, got, we got somebody in the in the chat too so okay. good, good, right. good. Well, what was that again in John 6, 14 and 15, is Jesus both the Christ and the prophet? Let's see. John 6, 14 and 15. Never read it for us. All right. It says, when the people saw the sign, is it on the screen? Uh, let me see. Uh, Hold on. It's not on the screen. Hold on. Let me get it up. There we go. All right. So it says, when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Ron, what did they want to do by force in verse 15? What did Jesus do? Perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So that means they knew he's both the Messiah, because only the Messiah can be king, and the prophet that was to come yeah. into the world, right? Yeah, that's important. Wow. Okay, now, Jesus was in, time, was in time to reign on earth, so he pulled himself away because they're expecting a political king. But now notice, they see he is the Christ, because only the Christ can reign as king, and they also say he's that prophet to come into the world. Now, folks, if you're wondering why they thought he's a prophet to come into the world, because if you read the context, he's in the wilderness, in the desert, and he just multiplied bread and fish, and he fed 5,000 men. And then if you count their women and children, there were more than 5,000. When they saw the miraculous feeding of bread in the wilderness, that reminded them 
of the manna at the time of Moses in the wilderness. That's why if you read on, they talk about, well, you know what? Moses gave us bread in, in the wilderness. So it now becomes the bread discourse. Why? Because of the miracle. What miracle? Like God did a miracle time, Moses, feeding them bread in the wilderness for 40 years until they entered into Canaan. Jesus shows up and does a miraculous multiplication of bread and fish, feeding 5,000 men, not counting their women and children, so it would be more than that. When they saw the miracle, wow, he is a prophet like Moses because he just did a similar miracle to Moses, something that Muhammad could never do, so he could never be the prophet like Moses. And therefore, he is the king, Messiah, and prophet. Now let, him, let us crown him to now lead us and march against Rome. And that's why Jesus pulled away. And if you still don't see that, according to Jesus and his followers, the Christ is the prophet, contrary to the Jews who are wrong and mistaken because they're not inspired. They can be right sometimes. They can be wrong sometimes. We Christians sometimes can be right. And our exegesis sometimes we can be wrong. So I don't look to uninspired, fallible interpreters of the Old Testament to develop my theology because the Bible is an accurate historical record that accurately records the speeches of people, even people that the authors don't agree with. Yeah. So John doesn't agree with the Jews that the Christ is different from the prophet. Right. But in, in case you still don't believe, Jesus claims to be all the prophet and the priest and the king. John 5, 45 to 47. John 5. 45 to 47. Let's now, if this doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. Let's see. Let's see. Hopefully, you know, good here. All right. <clears throat> so it says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. Mm. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So if that prophet to come is found in the writings of Moses, and Jesus says Moses wrote about him, and he's not just saying about that. The entirety of the books of Moses point to Jesus. Yes. What room does that leave for a false prophet, an Arab, who comes centuries later and contradicts the statements of John and the statements of Moses, the very books they're quoting to try to prove the contrary? Now, Asif really wants to get embarrassed. He said, show me where Jesus said he's a final prophet. I don't need to show you that. I want to show you Jesus claiming to be the God who sends the prophets. So unless Asif, you admit that Muhammad was sent by Jesus and Jesus is his God, you just buried Islam. Matthew 23, 34. Show him what Jesus said. Who yes. sends prophets after him? Who is the God that sends prophets after Jesus leaves this world? After Jesus returns to the Father in heaven physically? Here you go. Yeah, Muhammad is BS, Asif. You're right. And the Quran is BS. You know, but we agree with you. I'm glad you agree. What does it say in Matthew 23, 34? Now, this is Jesus speaking. Now, God's logic tell me who sends prophets wow. into the world? God is the one that sends prophets, Sam. But Jesus is speaking here. What does he say? Jesus says, therefore, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. Now, Jesus is telling them the future Ooh. and how it will unfold. In the future, I'm going to be sending you prophets. So Jesus in heaven will be sending true prophets on earth and scribes, wise men. And you're going to kill some, crucify, and flog, and throw out of your synagogue in order to fulfill or fill up the limit of sin of how much I'll tolerate. And then I'm going to come and destroy your city and your sanctuary. That's the rest of it. So who sends prophets? God's logic? Wow. God sends prophets. And Jesus is claiming to be the God that sends prophets. So if Muhammad came and says that some other God sent him, not Jesus, what does that make Muhammad? <laughs> that makes Muhammad a liar and a false prophet. Now, let's go back to the other example he quoted, John 16, 12 to 13. Let's, then I'll wrap it up because I got to go. But since no, Asif brought up John 16, 12. Okay, good. See, Asif said, see, 
16, 12, 13 was Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad. Thank you, Asif. God sent you to help me destroy <laughs> Islam and bury Islam and expose Muhammad. Thank yeah. the Lord for you. May you get saved. Yeah. So look what he quoted, guys. John 16, 12 to 13. This is Muhammad. It's right there. Can you print his comment so they can see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get it right here. But guys, his own words. He said, this is Muhammad, right? Yeah. He said, that's Muhammad. Okay. Now let's read the rest of it. Uh-oh. Surprise, Sam. Surprise, David. <laughs> what is the 12, 13, but what, what he did not read? Yes. Read 12, so, 13, what he quoted, right? Yep. Yep. So he quoted 12, 13. It says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Now, he, God marked, now, now mm -hmm. he stopped there before you read. Mm -hmm. he, he stopped there. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Why didn't he read 14 and 15? And now read it to see why. Now, for, now yes. remember, he stopped at 13, but let's read 14 15, what he did not read. Yes. All right. He will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. <laughs> so again, remember, you're the one with the logic I'm learning. So I'm going to help you or help me to figure this out. So yeah, wait, the best. spirit of truth, the spirit of truth yep. is the one who will reveal and convince everyone that whatever the father possesses belongs to Jesus? Yes, that's the Spirit's so job. That's what the Holy Spirit was going to do. He's going to be sent, the Spirit of Truth. Now, let's not say Holy Spirit. Just say the Comforter because he wants to say it's Muhammad. So okay. this Spirit of Truth, which Asif said was Muhammad, is going to convince the world everything that the Father owns belongs to Jesus. Jesus owns all that the Father possesses. Am I right? Is that what it says? That's exactly what it says, yes. Now, does the Father own the entirety of creation? Everything the, in creation? The little, every speck of creation belongs to the Father. So would that include Muhammad? Did the Father own Muhammad and does he own all Muslims? Do they belong yes, to him? Absolutely. Okay, but now Jesus said, everything that the Father has mine. Does that mean Jesus just claimed that he owns the entire creation? He owns every creature. He owns Muhammad's life and he owns all Muslim life? Absolutely. Everything in creation, including Muhammad and every Muslim. So why is this man quoting a verse or a section that proves that the true God is the father of Jesus Christ mm. and Jesus is his unique son who owns everything in creation that belongs to the father, which means he owns Muhammad and all Muslims, mm -hmm. all of which Muhammad contradicted because the Quran says Allah is not the father of Jesus and he has no sons. Why right. would he quote this section? Uh, I think that he purposely ignored that, Sam. Oh, I think, yeah, well, then, I mean. Mm -hmm. Now, he just proved, folks, that Jesus is Allah, the God of the Quran, and Muhammad. Why? Because read verse 7, John 6. There we go. Who sends? This, yeah, you knew this. You don't know where I'm going. Now, guys, he said, this spirit of truth comforter, that's Muhammad. Well, I want you to tell Asif to ask Hamza and all his mm, pussycats from the pussycat den to contact me on uh, Skype stream art. And here I'm recorded. If I'm lying, they'll expose me. They come on free for all. Let's see if they can handle me by the power of Jesus Christ. But now he just said, this guy just said, Spirit of Truth Muhammad. Well, according to the Quran, Allah sent Muhammad to glorify Allah as Muhammad's God and the God of all creation. Right? So Allah sent Muhammad so that Muhammad would glorify Allah as the true God, the God of all creation, and Allah is Muhammad's God, and he was sent in the name of Allah, meaning the authority of Allah. But here, Jesus says, who's going to send the spirit of truth, which he just said was Muhammad? I will send him. Read it for us, brother. Read it for, right. for me. Send it, read it. Yeah. Say it for Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Whoa. So if Allah sent Muhammad and mm. Asim just said it, we got him recorded. Thank you, Jesus. is now recorded. Yes. Muhammad is that comforter, spirit of truth. 
And Jesus said, I will send the comfort spirit of truth. That means according to Asif, Jesus is Allah, Muhammad's God who sent Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And sends the prophets. So why does he not worship Jesus as his one and true, only true Allah? That's a good question, Asif. The link is in the chat, my friend, if you would love to come up and oh, uh, profess your faith. I got about comfort. 10 minutes if you want to come refute me. If not, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Come on up. The link is in the chat, my friend. You can come up and come profess your, your faith in Christ, my friend. You, By the way, I don't know. You have a Muslim in the private chat he thinks he can refute as that or as a troll, like Ezra Weiss, dub actor? I have no idea who Ezra, what Ezra is. I don't think he's he is. A oh, yeah, because that sounds like a pseudonym. He may be uh, under disguise. But And combating disbelief says he can refute me. So if you want to bring him up, see if you can. You got 10 disbelief just wants to get shot at me. Sure. Let's go. Uh, I may have to delay. Madam, please don't waste time. Be to the yeah, point. Yes, the point. Go. Oh, yeah. He's a Muslim. He's got a crown. Go ahead, friend. Okay. My time is bleeding. Go ahead, buddy. All right. So, first of all, we don't need any verses in the Bible to prove that Muhammad was the messenger of Allah. Okay. Now, before you go, continue, we're not dealing with you. We're dealing with your fellow ikhwan that were quoting the bible so are you saying they they don't know what they're doing because they're the ones who quoted these verses so before yeah, you, so they, you can, they, they can, they can, they can now, use hold on, my time is, i don't want to cut you off i'm trying to give you a chance because my time is fleeting you said you're going to refute me and i'm thinking because of the verses i cited do you agree it was your ikhwan in the comment section that quoted these verses this is why i'm addressing them do you agree with that yeah they can quote them if they want that's fine Okay, so then why are you saying you're going to refute me when I'm dealing with their misuse of the Bible? So correct yourself. Now, if you have another discussion where you want to use the Quran to prove Muhammad's messenger, then our brother can deal with that because I have to head out in 10 minutes. I thought you are going to refute these passages. Do you have anything yeah, I can, I can in the, because, of the Bible that you're going to refute? Yeah, I can refute them because okay, good. the verses that the Muslims use to prove that Muhammad was the messenger that was uh, prophesied in the, in the Bible by those verses mm -hmm. those verses um could mean different meanings according to how yeah, you give me the verses that him. you think point to him because remember i told you i got 10 minutes get give me the verses what you think point to him go ahead the spirit like the spirit of truth the verse that talks about this the one we just quoted that jesus sends yes so you met <laughs> jesus sends you muhammad i'm sorry so you just admit jesus sends your prophet muhammad of course not what, but that's the verse you just quoted, the spirit of truth. What are you not reading? Yeah. Can you open up John 15, 26? Yeah, the way that the Muslims understand it is that Allah sent Muhammad as the messenger after Jesus. Yeah, I don't care how you understand it. Explain to me the verse. How does the verse understand it? Who sends the spirit of truth? That's, that's my point. The verse, it depends on how you understand it. Unless you want to bring me a disciple. So can you try Jesus. to explain listen, a way listen, that listen. Jesus says, can you explain, explain. a way that Jesus saying, well, hold on, let me give you the verse. When Jesus says, I will send him from the father. So is Allah Muhammad's father, John 15, 26? So Allah doesn't have any sons. Okay, so He's no, but hold on. Man. Good, good, good. So Muhammad is not, the son of Allah is not his father, right? Yeah, Allah does not have any sons. Okay, can you read 26 in front of your eyes? This spirit of truth that you said is Muhammad. He comes from where? From whom? Allah created him like he created everyone else. Can you read the verse in front of you, not do the tap dance? I'm, it's right what there. I'm telling you is, if you would listen. Friend, can I'm you, you oh, is, I'm going to read it for you because I know you're scared to read. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth, I will send the spirit of truth from the Father, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. So I want to get you recorded for all the Muslims to hear from your mouth. Muhammad, the Spirit of Truth, came out from Allah, the Father, into the world. Say that. Like I said, it depends on how you understand the Muhammad, person. the Spirit of listen, Truth, listen. came out See, from Allah, you, the you, Father. You won't let, let me talk. You won't let me talk. No, no, because you're not dealing with the verse. I don't care how you interpret it. The verse is in front of you. I am dealing with the verse. How, okay. how did yes. Jesus explain the verse? That's my question. Okay, well, Jesus said it right there, hear, so explain, explain, explain it. You explain the verse. I wouldn't hear how Jesus I'm not explaining. I'm reading. I'm reading, not explaining. And, There's a okay, difference. Yeah, you know, have you ever heard of Tafsir before? You ever heard of Tafsir? Explain it. You ever heard of Tafsir before? I know you Can have. you explain the verse? Hey, combating. 
Give us that. He, does, he doesn't have much points. Yeah, Can you explain what Jesus means when he says, I will send the spirit of truth? What I'm saying is, in order for us to have the correct understanding, we have to know how Jesus explained it. Okay, so he says multiple times, he says multiple times, hey, combating, he says multiple times, I will send the, the spirit of truth. I will send him from the Father. He says this multiple times. So we have his explanation. So do you believe that Jesus sent Muhammad? Yes or no? First of all, I want to know how either A. Do you believe that Jesus sent wait, Muhammad? Wait, wait, yes or no? Listen, listen. You keep cutting me off. You want me to I am cutting you off because you're not dealing with the be point. A good ballet dancer. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. You would be good with the swirling how, dirt witches in listen, India. Listen. <laughs> right. how, how did the disciples explain that verse? I don't want to hear how it Okay, says, very easy. The disciples explained. Uh, let me. Can I explain to you how they did? The John who wrote show this. Me, show me. Okay. John 20 to 22 to 23. I'm going to show you, and we're going to bury Muhammad again. John that's 20, not, that's 22. Not, that's 20. not explanation. John 20, 22 to 23. Uh, this guy, why are you wasting my time with this? Guy? Oh, okay. so, you, listen, John listen, 20. John is listen. going to explain it for us. Hold on. Ish, ish, Let me talk. John Let me talk. 20, 22 to 23. Read it for because I'm out of here anyway because I got to go because this yeah. guy's a waste of time. Read 22 oh. to 23. John All right, 20. it says here. <laughs> And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. So here you have Jesus after resurrection. This is John explaining. And then he breathed on them that Holy Spirit. Now in the power of the Holy Spirit, they're going to go and bear witness and do ministry. So is that Muhammad? He breathed Muhammad on them? Like I said, let me finish. Yeah. Where yeah. is the disciples' explanation of the Hey, verse? brother, anyway, it was good to talk to you, uh, brother, and Lord willing. I will see you next Tuesday if you want me to come on, but give me one, uh, like, remind me, advance notice. Great topic, but they're not going to refute anything, but I like you because you learn now. When they get off topic, send them to Mecca, to Mecca <laughs> Christian Foundation. <laughs> love you, man. I got to go. I love you too, Sam. Hey, man. <laughs> I got to do eight miles to keep the weight down. I cannot go over 200 pounds. If I do, I will hate you for life. Then focus, dude. Quit cheating. All focus. Right. Only once a week, dude. Don't be, don't be hating, bro. Oh, my goodness. All right, bro. I'll see you guys. God bless you, man. I'll see love you, man. Love, I love Thank me you. too, but I love you also. <laughs> so you guys heard it here first, man. We have it here. We had uh, a nice gift given to us today. Again, Sam was available, came in with some excellent, excellent uh, exegesis of the text, breaking down the verses. I hope that you guys, um, I hope that you guys took, took, took some notes, if you didn't already uh, hear those explanations before, and use these arguments. The more that you use them, share them with people, teach them with your friends and stuff like that, the more you use them, the more second nature it becomes, right? The more second nature it becomes. So, uh, guys, don't even dignify the weirdos out here. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> hey, Shannon, what's going on, man? Such a surprise. But, yeah, guys, so, uh, oh, James is up here. What's going on, James? Come on up, brother. What's going hey, on? Hey, how's, how's it going? It's good. You finally made it, huh? Yeah, I, I told you I'd back you up, and then I'm, like, rushing to get inside, and then I see you have Sam on, and I'm like, he's got all the backup he needs right now. <laughs> right, with Sam coming on. Uh, so, so look, James, we have somebody. Uh, his name is John, who claims that he, I guess, used to be a Jew or followed the Jewish uh, religion and, now, and then converted to Islam. And so he's daring me to keep the stream going on for five more minutes. Maybe that's when he'll be available to come on. So, John, uh, we'll be here. We'll be here. James, will you be here with me for five minutes? Yeah, I, I plan on hanging out with you for a little bit, at least until you decide to cut it. I'll, I'll yeah. be your wingman if he decides to come up. Yes, sir. Let's Thank see, you. five Thank minutes. It's 7.06 now. So yep. that means you need to be up in our stream or in his stream by... 7 11 7 12. that's right that's right so he said he's trying to log in so we'll see so john will you're more than welcome to come on up and engage in the conversation my good friend um 
But yeah, Sam just Sam just gave us some nuggets, James. I don't know how long you were here, but this dude gave us some nuggets. Stuff that you would, you know, you've read before, but you didn't see it the, the way that, that the way that he brought it out. Like that's what amazes me every time I talk to Sam and he's going through the scripture, man. So. Yeah, because he's just like so knowledgeable about connecting the dots. And sometimes, um, just because we're 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 not we're still babies in the word, but we're trying to eat some meat and potatoes. But like, it's just I love seeing him go to John, then Acts, then Corinthians, then Jesus. Uh, it's great. Yeah, absolutely. This this, this is the verse that. Uh, let me let me pull it up really quick on the screen. What's up, Safras? Yes, Bob. You're right. Yeah. You're awake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wick. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. This is this, uh, and I, I'm glad you're up here too, man. I want your thoughts on this. This verse right here that that Sam brought out, where Jesus says that He is the one that sends the prophets and sent the prophets from the past. Uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 34. That's that was crazy to me, James. What are, what are your thoughts on this, uh, Safras? That Jesus is claiming to send the prophets. Are you a uh, what, what do you think of this? Therefore, I send you prophets and wise men, scribes, whom the scribes and so on will flog your synagogues. I don't know about this, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know the context of this kind of stuff. Well, the, the context is that Jesus is. Uh, giving his judgment on the ones who rejected him and the Pharisees specifically use woe to you scribes and Pharisees. You know, it's all about them, all about the Pharisees and those who follow them uh, and their deceit, them being blind and things of this nature. So he's, he's rebuking them. And the, yeah. yeah. The only argument here is, yeah, Muslim are saying, yeah, is, is Jesus or, or, Ready had the Holy Spirit with him. So why would why would Jesus say I have to go if I don't go? The comfort will not come. That because the be Holy Spirit him. left when he left. No, eh? Yes. No, the he's Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit left when he left, and so he sent the Holy Spirit back to the apostles. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, get that all because Jesus said to the disciples, "Yeah, that uh, you know that I have to go." If I don't go, the yes. come back. So when he, when he left, he sent the Spirit, right? When he left, he sent the Spirit, right? That's when the Holy Spirit came down on them, right? And they begin to speak in tongues and minister and preach in Acts. Remember? I know that. But then, then, then Jesus said to him, I have many things to say to you now, but you cannot and the bear Holy them. Spirit will come many into... things. Yes. No, the Holy Spirit no, is no. the one who brought the remember. Wait, hold on. Before you skip, though, I asked you about this. I asked you about this. Do you what do you what are your thoughts on Jesus saying that he's the one who sends the prophets? Therefore, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes. So Who's the only one that sends prophets? Uh Safra? Obviously. Obviously. God, obviously. So if Jesus is claiming that he's the one that sends the prophets, is he claiming he's claiming to be God, clearly, right? How can <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe this. Well, that's your scriptures, man. Let's ask if you. <laughs> I, I know. I listen. Listen. I know. I know you don't believe my scriptures. However, I just want you to have, you know, to to I be know, objective. Like, for example, your scripture says that Muhammad is the seal of the prophets, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I cannot go into your Quran and say the Quran doesn't say that. I can reject that. Obviously, I do. I don't believe that. But yeah. that's what your Quran says. It's very clear. I can't re I can't deny that it says that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So when we so when we have a verse like this, the verse clearly says, you know, in that Jesus is claiming to be God who sends the prophets, right? Yeah, for I send you prophets and wise men, scribes with them who goes flogging and cynical persecute them. Yeah, well, I don't I, I, I don't know. This is this is that oh this is your scripture that's in it so I cannot I I cannot say okay you know is is this and that but 
That's what he's but you, saying. But you can see people. that he is claiming to be God, right? In this verse. He's not claiming to be God, bro, man. That verse is in then there. Who, who's the one who sends the prophets? Safras. Yeah. Come on, bro. You're smarter than the others, man. You're smarter yeah. than the others. I shouldn't have did to go around the okie dump with you. Did did you watch my talk this morning with that Hash Hussein Mashni with the call? No, I didn't. I what was I gonna watch do? How, watch how I destroyed Chris Claus and him in about <laughs> half an hour. Chris okay. Claus left the chat in that's in, fine, in about five bro. Minutes. But look, you're dealing with me, man. We're we're at I our know. dinner table right now. You already left that dinner table. You're here with me now, man. You're cool, yeah. Focus, cool. yeah, but Focus, focus. With this verse, with Jesus claiming that he sends the prophets, and you said and agreed with me that only God sends the prophets. Of course, only God sends the prophets. So is Jesus claiming to be God when he says, I am the one who sent the prophets? Unless God gave him the authority to, to, to you know, do that. Come on, bro. No, wouldn't, no, that be, no, wouldn't that be shirk? No, Allah's a shirk. How is it shirk? Because it's, now it's, you're saying that God is applying a partner in Himself in sending prophets. No, he he uh, he uh, uses uh, things like he uh, used angel like 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 we believe that he used angel game Gabriel to send the uh, prophet Ahmed. Yeah, no, you don't. So, no, yeah. no, you do not. No. You would never say that Gabriel sent Muhammad. You'll no, say it was Gabriel that was one that was the media between God and exactly a mediator, not a sender, not a sender, a mediator, a middleman. That's all he was. But who sent Muhammad? So God who sent obviously. Muhammad? Right. So the prophets are sent by God, right? Like, do we yeah, really have yeah. to do this? Okay, no. they're sent. They're sent by God. Now, when Jesus says, "I send the prophets," <laughs> is he claiming yeah. to be God? Come on, man, be honest. Come on, he's not claiming to be God. There, he's saying, "I, I send you the prophets." He might have had authority to to do it. The authority by God to do it, but there's no. Where in any scripture do you find God giving authority to anyone to send prophets? See, everybody else in the chat gets it, man. Everybody yeah, else all, in the chat gets it. Why, why Christians. is it so hard for you to get it all of a sudden? Because they're all, because they're all Christians. Obviously, they, they agree with you anyway. So you mean to tell me that only Christians can follow common sense, Safras? No, I know what you're saying. But you need to hold, look at the whole context of it. We, yeah, the whole, we context the, is, the whole context is... Jesus is rebuking the Pharisees and the scribes for rejecting him, for being blind and leading others astray. And he says that I sent you the prophets who and wise men who they killed, who you guys killed. Jesus says, I did that. What Now, if we're looking at the whole context of this, who, according to the Old Testament and the previous scriptures, who is the one that sent those prophets? Obviously, God, obviously. Yes, exactly. So if Jesus is applying this attribute to himself, who is Jesus claiming to be? I'm not saying I'm not gonna say God. I'm not gonna say God. I'm not say God, it. Bro. Just say no, it. No, no, no. Because Alhamdulillah. Yahweh. Say it. Just say I, it. I don't know about this. I called it because your thing says about Abraham. Yes. So, when you so why are you talking my, about John for? We're actually in Matthew, not even John. Isn't it oh, isn't Matthew. it crazy how we can how we have a verse like this not in John but in something like Matthew, where where a lot of people say that Jesus <laughs> why, where a lot of people say that only the divinity of Christ is found in John, yet here we have in Matthew a verse like this right isn't that crazy? But the every the complication here yeah the complication here yeah I know where you're going I know where you're going here but the complication here is yeah. Be honest. No, let me answer. The complication is, yeah, you got verses that say this, but at the same time, you got verses like Luke 6, 12, which says Jesus was praying verses to God all night. Wait, verses that say what? That Jesus was worshipping God all night. No, no, no. When you said, you said, well, you have verses like this, verses like what? What is this? The verses that you're quoting is, is you know, the, the one that you're quoting now. Uh-huh. 
But then wait, you have other No, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. What, what, what's significant about that verse I was quoting? What, what is it? What is it? What is, what is it? What is the verse showing about Jesus that I'm quoting? Because you're saying you have verses like this, because I, I, I'm hearing what you're saying. You're saying basically that there's contradictory verses. You have verses like this, and then you have verses that seem to teach that Jesus is not God. So are you saying that this verse teaches that Jesus is God? No, he's, he's just in that. I said prophet. So, so what do you mean? Routine. So that's why I asked you, what do you mean by verses like this? Bro, what, it's what a do you word, mean we don't know the work of the unseen. It's the work of the unseen. Jesus is talking about the work of the, un, un, the work of the unseen. And who's doing the who's doing the work of the unseen? Yeah. God Who? through him. Ah, God through him. Yeah. So when you again, I'm gonna bring up the comparison that you were about to bring up. You were you were comparing verses. To this, like you're saying, we have verses like this. You didn't say what it is like, like what's about it that makes it like this. But you you intentionally contrasted it with verses that seem to teach that Jesus is not God. So I, I get this part that you're saying that there's verses that seem to teach that Jesus is not God compared to verses like this that teach what? No, it just says that I send prophets, yeah? <laughs> okay. It does not say, it does not say uh, I'm God. Safra, safra. It does not say I'm God, every man. You show me a safra. verse where it says I am God. Then we safra. will say, okay, you have got argument, yeah? Do you, have a, argument? Do you have a verse okay. in the Quran where it's quoting the prophet Muhammad saying, I am the final prophet? No. God says it that he's a fine prophet. No, no, but I'm, I'm asking where, where does Muhammad say that about himself? I know you are saying it's that Allah hadith. says that about him, but it's in so, the hadith. So it's send me so hadith. send me a hadith where Muhammad says exactly this Ooh. word I am well, the last prophet. Send me the hadith and I will believe well, you. I've well, never I seen one where he says hadith. those words together. He says it in the hadith now. I need to go on the on you know onto my computer now and hi yes, go hadith. find me the hadith and yeah, we'll yeah, be find here. me the hadith. Yep. Yeah, we'll see that's that. part of the game when they play, like then it's like when they say Jesus is the Messiah. Well then you do the same thing. Where in the Quran does Jesus say I am the Messiah? Like they're taking this hyper statement that unless somebody says I am the best or I am God. That somehow that not means that they're not God. Yeah. Even okay. Bart Ehrman, who disagrees with us, says that that's not a good qualifier to critique Christianity. Yeah, Bart was a hypocrite anyway. Forget him. He's a he's a he's a hypocrite. He does he does Christian side and he does Islam side. He's a dumb hypocrite. I don't I don't care about him. But the main argument is yeah. The main argument is yeah. If 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 the New Testament was so clear that Jesus was God is good, but there is so much contradictions going on there, man. It says Jesus. Pray to God all night in Luke six twelve. If Jesus prayed to God all night, what on earth all that about? I I, do, I don't understand why you're running away from the verse we were talking about. Running. Okay, it's so what what wait what are you wait what's the contradiction? What's the contradiction? Tell me. In one place, you know that you lot claim that Jesus God in this verse here. No, 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 no. Don't tell me what, what what I'm claiming. Okay. What you what you see from the verse? How you doing, John? What you see from the Hi, verse? Fine. Can you hear me? Can you uh, hear me? Yeah, just, yeah. One second, John. One okay. second. One second. Okay. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> stop, Rob. You said that there. You're you're saying that there's contradictions, not in our statements, but in the verses themselves, right? In the verses themselves. You're saying that one verse seems to teach one thing while another verse teaches another thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like for example, if the you're saying that the verse that shows Jesus praying to the Father, that shows that Jesus is not God, right? That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. All right. Now, the verse that said where Jesus says, "I'm the one that sends the prophets," what does that teach? Because you're you're comparing the two. No, so I'm what not, does I'm the not, one I'm, teach where it says that I send the prophets? I'm not comparing that verse. I'm saying the verse where it says. <laughs> yes, you are. Prophet. You literally I'm started off comparing it when I asked you about the verse. You said, "Well, you have a problem because you have verses. You have verses like, you have verses like this, and then you have verses like Luke, where Jesus is praying to the Father. What's that on about? Yeah, 
I said we don't know the work. This is work of the unseen. Like God, I have given the, yeah. the, the authority. I don't, we don't, I don't know think you're called. comprehending, bro. I don't think you're understanding what's 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 going on. But it's all right, bro. I gotta I gotta give John a chance because he said five minutes and uh you know he dared us to, right. to be ready. Okay. But you don't have to go anywhere. You can you can you can okay. chill here. What's up, friendly Muslim? Slum, okay, bro. Peace, peace. Okay, I so guess back to uh, the original verse was. John eight fifty eight, correct? Where um, Jesus no. says he is, um, where Jesus says the Comforter will go, correct? No, 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 not not eight fifty eight. Uh, uh, the verse that we were talking about was John six, oh. John sixteen verse verse seven. That's the verse that Sam brought out um, okay. about him sending. Okay, the Comforter, the, comfort, the Comforter verse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, where Jesus says that. Um, I have to leave so the comforter will come. Yes. Right? That one. Yes. Okay. Do you believe that Great. Muhammad is the comforter? No, that doesn't refer to Muhammad at all. Say that again. That what verse that? does not refer to Muhammad. And you're a Muslim, right? That verse does not refer to Muhammad. Alhamdulillah. I am a Muslim. All right, he's and a I can explain to you what that first means if you would like me to. Just, just one second, because this is right. this is this is uh, this is big for us, because um, we usually don't get Muslims to say okay. to admit that, right? And Safraz and obviously the other Muslims up here were fighting tooth and nail, saying that that's about Muhammad. Correct. But you're honest enough to notice that it's not about Muhammad. Yeah, I can't no, put my camera on right now, but I think Avery, you and I have bigger I beards am. than the Muslims on stage. <laughs> Just to throw this out, it is true. <laughs> we got bigger beards than the Muslims. Well, you know, yeah, John, where is your beard, man? I, I, the I, I can't grow a beard. I grow a goatee. I'll, I'll respond to that one first. I can't grow a beard. I grow a goatee, and then I grow this great big goatee. For Ramadan, and the guy at the mosque teased me because they look like Osama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So go ahead. Give so, your explanation. Oh, yeah. That's why I don't have. So that's why I don't work here. That's funny. Okay. But, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what's, what's your explanation on the, the so, comforter? But yeah, that. So, yeah, as a Muslim, I understand that. But yeah. I really, I really appreciate that. So, Okay. Uh, what what do you usually? So do you want I mean, to explain ever, what it really means? I mean, we know what it really okay, means. Great. We, we we know what it really means. So if you're saying it's not about Muhammad, then we don't even have to go over it. We 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 don't we don't have to go over it. Um, well, well, we were talking about. We no, you don't. Know. The... Well, that's a cliffhanger. If he's told, said it's not, then what's his theory? Then? Oh no, I don't think you do because you don't know what you don't know what the Jews think. Yeah, you have to remember something. Adrian. Yeah, the, the people who wrote this, the people who wrote the person who wrote this was a Jew, so we do know what the Jews thought about this. You have to understand something. You have to understand one one fact about everybody in that room. Uh huh. Is a Jew. Yeah, you have to understand he's a Jew. Mm -hmm. So if you want somebody to adjudicate what this means, couldn't resist. <laughs> understand. <laughs> That this it, this explains the Quran verse. I wish I could quote it right. But still tell you which one it is, but where it says Jesus Christ is a man who is strengthened by the Holy Spirit. The Comfort is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is a man. This verse explains how Jesus Christ is a man who is strengthened by the Holy Spirit. The Quran doesn't say that. I know the verse you're talking about. It says that he like was the Quran strengthened. says. The Quran says that he was given the Holy Spirit or strengthened with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't call him a man that was strengthened by the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say that. Yeah, it does. It says it many, many times. Okay, can you bring the verse? Let's look at it together. <coughs> you remember the verse it, or no? Is instant conditions going? He was strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah, I'm going to Google. Yeah. I'm on my laptop. I'm going to Google away. I can't see you because I'm in another one. But I will show you exactly where it is. 
But yeah, the Quran does say that. It says that multiple times. It says that he was so strengthened by the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't say that he was uh, a man strengthened by the Holy Spirit. It doesn't, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say, it does that. say multiple, multiple times that he's a man. The Quran is not authoritative to us Christians. So if even if the Quran said A, B, and C, as a Christian, we reject it because Muhammad is a false prophet. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So, and is he freezing? Because he looks like he's like a still yeah, box. Yeah, his, yeah, his, uh, his connection is lagging. Avery, but the thing is, yeah, just one thing, yeah, please, yeah? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. You know, you know, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, 18, yeah, and oh, 18, 18, yeah? No, 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 Moses said, or God is saying, yeah, that he should speak what I shall command him to, yeah? Yeah. And then Jesus is saying the same thing. Whatever yep. he's going to hear, that he's going to speak and he's going to show you things to come. But we, the Muslims are asking you questions, yeah? Can he please ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us and give this information to us, please? But the Christians did. can't. Yeah? Did. But he ask him to speak did. to us now. Ask him to speak to us now. If, if he's he here did. now. No, Avery, if the Holy Spirit is here right now, he tell him to talk to us. He already did. I'm not saying he already did. I'm saying, can he speak to us now? I, he I already said, did. So you, if you're, asking, you're, you're asking in reference to the verse. And who was he? He was speaking to the disciples, right? What's that? The, that's the Correct. Holy Spirit. I mean, he was speaking to the disciples, right? Sephiroth? Yeah. Who was that? The, Jesus, he was speaking to the disciples, saying that the Holy Spirit yeah. will come, teach them all things, and show them things no, to come. No, he was saying the comforter, the comforter, the, the comforter. Right. Yes, the, yes. He said that we, he will come, bring to their remembrance, and all these things, right? Talking to the disciples, right? No, yeah, but the thing is... That's exactly what he did. We, we see no. that in the backs and all that, and, and no, the letters. The, yeah, Hadakli, the, the comforter, Jesus said he's a... I have got many things to say to you now, but you cannot bear them. Now, can now can you show me a few many things that the disciples taught? Because we know for a fact they did not teach a single new teaching oh, after, after Jesus. Where does it say that? Where does it say new things? No, I'm saying Jesus said to him, "I have many things to say to you now, but you cannot, you cannot bear, bear them. them." So what we have here, we have literally a whole. We have whole letters of writings from the apostles emphasizing and going on of really coming from the source of what Jesus taught and expanding on what Jesus taught, breaking it down even furthermore for greater understanding and fulfillment. That's what we have with the writings of the apostles. And then not all, not only right. that, but he also says that he'll bring to remembrance what I said to you when they when there are things that Jesus said that they didn't understand at the time. Where we read, like, for example, in John chapter 2, for example, John chapter 2, Jesus talking to the Pharisees says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. At the time when Jesus said that, they didn't know what he was talking about. But after he ascended, they understood and remembered his words and said, oh, well, what he meant by this is he was talking about the temple of his body. And they put that in the scripture. They said, when we remember that he said this, we knew he was talking about the temple of his body. That it's his body that if they, when they destroy it, he'll raise it again in three days. And we have another, we have examples like this where these, the remembrance of things and the re revelation of these things become clear to the apostles. That wasn't clear at first, but we see it's clear by the time they're writing this stuff down. And that's because the Holy Spirit. Come on, every month. If they, if, if, if they, could comprehend the message, he would have given it to him there and then. The Do you agree with my point that Jesus is strengthened by the Holy Spirit? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, Sarah 5 110 says Jesus is strengthened by the Holy Spirit. But you're saying, but you try, what you did, John, is you put yeah, an emphasis places. on man. Remember, you put an emphasis on Jesus as a man strengthened by uh, the Holy Spirit, trying to emphasize that Jesus is nothing but okay. a man, which the Quran doesn't okay. say. Well, I didn't. I didn't say he was nothing but a man. Okay, there's a number of different things. So he's strengthened by the Holy Spirit, and as I understand it from my study of Judaism, 
what's being strengthened by the again, Holy Spirit please? is something that occurs quite often. Hmm? Yeah, chapter five, verse one, ten, James. So yeah, go ahead, um, John. So that proves that uh, Jesus was strengthened by the Holy Spirit. So certainly, um, so we all agree on that statement. Now, yeah, the Quran yeah, has a verse where it says Jesus. Oh, oh go ahead. Do you want to respond, or should I continue? No, yeah, you, yeah. Go ahead, continue. Okay. I didn't all right. Know. Okay. All right. So yeah, assuming we we got over the Spirit, my next point would be. Um, there is a verse in the Quran that has different understandings, a liberal and a conservative. I'll take the liberal understanding that um, Jesus is the word, the walking word of God. And it says it's in Miriam. Um, I don't remember the exact verse. It's, if I was prepared for this, I would have done it, but I'm not prepared. So yeah, <laughs> um, I, was exactly. scrolling. I was just scrolling my Facebook when I saw you and that. Yeah, I, I, talk I got you. I got you, but, John. I got you. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm here for. So you got, you got uh, chapter three of the Quran that says that Jesus is a okay. word from Allah, and then you have chapter four, verse one seventy one, that says He is Allah's okay. word and the Spirit from Him. Cool. Okay. Now there are two different interpretations. He is the word of God, or He is the word from God. So there are two different interpretations of that. But so if Jesus Christ is a man which it says in the quran multiple places where we'll we'll you'll stipulate i assume that he is strengthened by the holy spirit we stipulated that and that he's the word of god now mm -hmm. that is an alternate alternative to the trinity that is comes a lot closer to the truth from the perspective of the jews so this is a Jesus a... that you can come close to bringing, because um, I actually have a song. I have a song parody. Um, can I ask a clarifying if question you like so briefs? I understand how you're doing this, how you're oh. translating? Um, okay. What? Well, um, so you, you, I just want to just to clarify. So you say because it's describing him as a man in the Quran that he can't mm -hmm. have any more value. Is that is that what you're saying? Like, I didn't so say he that. can't be Messiah? Because, like, for example, when well, I read the Quran all over, it says Muhammad is just a plain warner, that he's no no more special than anyone else, but yet okay. he's the prophet right. of God. Okay. So if I take your right. hyper meaning that these have to be literal in every context, then Muhammad is just like everyone else. Everyone else is just like a prophet. It all washes. Well, Muhammad was a more righteous man than everybody. I'm not one who believes he was perfect, but, you know, you don't have to be perfect to be a prophet. Moses wasn't perfect. And it says that in both my book and your book. Okay, but um, he, um, Jerusalem, I like that. I might have to use that. <laughs> uh, um, but the idea that, um, that Jesus is the walking word of God um and i have a song parody just like is just like the prophet mr ezekiel when he ate the scroll the word became real so jesus the word ezekiel the word so ezekiel ate the scroll and i'm saying and you can tell the jews that okay so in some sense he became the word of god and now if you back out and if you want me to do this as a form of song parody, I can do it. But <laughs> if you back out to the tune of Just Teresa, so words, keep following, <laughs> was he the only word of God in Islam? Because Sheikh Uthman and others, is Jesus the only word of God in Islam? Because Sheikh Uthman and others tried to apply that to prophet inappropriately. Are you taking the opposite position that Jesus is unique in being called the word of God? I don't think there's anybody else in the Quran who is described as the word of God. Now, perfect. that doesn't mean he's the only word of God. If um, I guess that's, I'm not sure I can come up with a better answer than that or more, but um, I don't know if that, if that answers your question. No, that was great. That was straightforward, honest, uh, upfront okay. with it. You didn't try right. to 
force Messiah and the word of God to somehow mean the same thing. And uh, you didn't try to make messenger somehow mean that. So, yeah, thank you. Okay. And then and Messiah is a totally different subject. So, um, but that's another issue. Um, that's a totally different discussion. But um, what is Stan, that? Stan, really? sorry, one um, second. Were you Jewish and now you're Muslim? Is that correct? Uh, I wasn't officially Jewish. Um, if you're familiar with the phrase Benai Noak, son of Noah, laws okay. of Noah, son of Noah. Noahide. Okay, are you familiar with that? I'm familiar Pardon? with the Noahide part. But there, okay, son, yes, sons of Noah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, Noahide, sons of Noah, yes. And for those who aren't, um, some people jokingly refer to it as Jew light, in which mm -hmm. um, the Noahides believe in the theology of the Jews, believed, believe in what the Jews think about God. And I did take an intro to Judaism class, so um, the whole year. Um, no, I and I held and I held the Jewish belief of God with somebody who only has to follow 66 commandments instead of 300. Um, so if that answers your question. <laughs> and then you became a Muslim. Right. I became a Muslim because um, partly because um, there are two things that I never didn't get around to that I want to get around to. One of them was read uh, the book of um Oh, what was it? Um, read the book of Hebrews. And the other thing was to read the just what the Quran said about Jesus. And two, min and two minutes before, if you ask me two minutes before I became a Muslim, I would say, well, I honestly believe that Jesus Christ was um, a evil messenger of Deuteronomy 13. So... Basically, as a false a false prophet of Deuteronomy 13, um, and that's what I believed before I was a Muslim. And then I read what the Quran said about Jesus. Okay, before I before I declare as a Jew or before I declare as allied to the Jew under the Noahides, I'm going to read what the Quran says about Jesus. And I did, and the Quran clarified everything. And I consider the Quran a superior revelation, which some Jews consider to be a statement of blasphemy, but that's the only thing I would ever say that would be considered a statement of blasphemy against the Jews, um, if it is. Um, but um, the um, but uh, so I and the Quran clarified it. The verse and the verse we're talking, the Bible verse we're talking about, how Jesus is a man who's strengthened by Jesus, is a man he's strengthened by the Holy Spirit, and he is the Word of God. I was like, okay, I put all those three things together. And I say, okay, you take the Jewish understanding of all three of those verses and you get something that clarifies clarifies Jesus, gives me a clarified Jesus that I can bring back to uh, the synagogue, or at least come close so to bringing back to the synagogue. You're saying that the Quran doesn't clarify those meanings in, of Jesus? It doesn't clarify it itself? Well, you have to understand... It, the Quran clarified everything for me. However, you have to kind of know what you're reading. If I had not studied Judaism, if I had not studied the Jewish foundations of Jesus and the Jewish objections to Jesus, then I would not have understood that. But um, having had that understanding, once I read the Quran, I immediately had the clarification, and that's when I said my shahada. So going, going with James's train of thought when it comes to Jesus being the unique one who's identified as Allah's word. You made okay. a distinction. You asked a distinction question. I, I think it was kind of rhetorical, but whether he's the word from God or the word of God. What's the difference? Um, not entirely certain. Um, I would say there Not is no certain about the semantics, but um, but um, Eve, I'm not entirely certain about the semantics on that one. So I probably, I don't know if you want me to explore that, I would. Um, John, that's probably John, not where I would go with it, but I, I would I would say that there is no difference. The word of God is the word from God, right? Like okay. it's it's literally, I think, a, a slightly different way of saying the okay. exact same thing. 
you know? Okay. So um, if, if, if Jesus is yeah. the word of Allah, if he's the word of okay. Allah and the right. spirit from him, okay. what does that tell you about his about his nature? What does that tell me about his nature? Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll back up a little bit and say the Torah is the written word of God. Jesus is the walking word of God. And the Quran, not Muhammad, the Quran is the recited word of God. So you believe so, that the you believe that the word of God took on a few different flesh. forms. It was it took you believe it took on flesh. You can say that, yeah. John, what one fourteen is it? Yeah. Yes. So you do believe that. So you believe, according to the Quran, that Jesus pre-existed as the Word of God before He took on flesh. Yes, I could. I could say that. Now, so, how does that how does that line up with then Jesus being just a, a human being? Because that that definitely shows <laughs> that He has He's not just a human being since He existed as God's Word before He took on flesh. Okay. Well, a couple of things might have to back up a little bit. And um, when you when you hear the phrase "word of God," I haven't been. I only been here for. I haven't been to this part for years. So, as I said, if I, you know, go into a little more detail if you want um, next time. But uh, there is the word of God. Maybe just sing my song period because I have it all in this. Uh, but the um, if you. Um, and I, I say, as, and I'm more of a liberal Muslim, and I'm closer to Christianity than most Muslims. I think you can say that right now. Um, that if you look at the definition word of God, I, I don't believe that any Christian is going to hell merely because they try to learn about the Jewish God by reading Greek scriptures. Okay, so there are two different definitions of the word of God. The one you're probably familiar with is Logos, correct? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. So Logos is a Greek word, and that's a Greek word that pre-existed Jesus, for lack of a better way to put it. And so basically, when, when all of these Jesus concepts were translated from God-fearing Hebrew to pagan Greek. Oh, Lord. A lot was lost in translation. So the Jewish definition of the word, of the phrase word of God is memra. So, and, uh, and logos is, comes from the root word logistics, and that actually indicates thinking. So if you use logos to describe word of God, then Jesus becomes God's thoughts. However, if you back away from the pagan Greek and you think that God-fearing Hebrew is superior to pagan Greek, and if you don't, I kind of have a problem with you, but um, <laughs> if, I've had somebody say that, that pagan Greek is just as good a way to understand the God of the Jews as Hebrew. It's like, no, it's not. Um, well, so, yeah, yeah, but, uh, okay, um, uh, but yeah, so, and this just means more like God's work, God's action on earth. Okay. So if you look at Jesus as God's work on earth, God's actions on earth, that explains everything. That explains how he can be the word of God that preexisted. He can be part of the force that created the universe and still not know what's going on because he's God's yeah. act. He's not God's thoughts. He's God's actions. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so the, 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 the pushback that I would have with this understanding is that okay. when we, when we like read the old Testament or like the, mm -hmm. some of the Targums, how it describes okay. the word, it, it describes the word, the Mimra as mm -hmm. a person like, like uh, that, that has conscious that it, that is aware of what he is doing and, and how he's acting when he speaks right. and creating right. and stuff like that. Like literally the, like, I, I believe it's the Targums that translate John one. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, not John one, Genesis one, Genesis one, okay. where it says that it's the word that 
created and the word was walking through the gardens and it's the word who right. made man and, and female in the image of God and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like it, it right. it's like Yahweh is interacting with the word, um, mm -hmm. the Mimra. What, what are your, right. have you, have you read that? And what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm not as deep into the Targums as I'd like to be, as I would have liked to be. Okay. And then uh, when I can this, when I kind of got a, when I, you know, I've forgotten a lot about this, but that's my, um, that Jesus is, that yes, the Targums say the word of God is that which created it. And um, the idea, the Jewish idea, the Christian idea, the Jewish idea and the Muslim idea of God are almost, <clears throat> almost exact. There's only one difference only one difference, and I personally think it's minor. You're probably gonna blow, blow it out of proportion. Um, and this is the idea that um, that we consider the spirit of God. We we consider the Holy Spirit the spirit from God, and they consider the spirit of God. But that's really the only semantic, only difference between us and the Jews. Period. But um, the idea, but the idea that God says be, and it is. So God said, be to Jesus, and Jesus did everything. So, yeah, but see, Christian that wouldn't that wouldn't make sense. That see, I, I have a problem with that in the Quran because that doesn't okay. make sense to me. Because because it doesn't okay. it says that Jesus is the Word of Allah, not that He was created by the Word of Allah, right? So in saying that Jesus, so usually how they try to say they try to say Jesus is the Word in Allah because He was created by the Word be. So they they make Jesus a result of God's word instead of Jesus being God's word itself. Exactly. And that's, and that's what Memra, that's, what... that's the point of Memra. That, that's why, that's how the Quran clarifies. If you go back to the Jewish Memra, that's how everything's clarified. But it doesn't. Look, so look, I'm, I'm going to show you the, the Targum, the Jewish Targums on this. But with okay. the Quran, it, their mm -hmm. interpretation of that does not work because that's not what the Quran demonstrates. The Quran says that Jesus is Allah's word, not a result of Allah's word. He is Allah's word. This is two different things. You know, like like if I were to if I were to snap my fingers, now you're in semantics. No, it's not. It's important. Like for example, if I were to snap my fingers, and then poof, a frog is here. Right? You okay. will not say that the frog is the snap. The frog is created by the snap. Two different things. Right, okay. the Quran said. A little, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so a little, a little more relevant metaphor would be an author and a book. Okay, so this is Earth from Above. This is a book. This is written by. Jan Arthur's Bertrand. Okay. Has a lot of pictures of Earth in it. So this is the word. Okay, technically it's the pictures, but yeah, okay. So say this is the word of Jan Arthur's Bertrand. Jesus is the word of God. This is not Jan Arthur's Bertrand. This is the word of Jan Arthur's Bertrand. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is not God, but Jesus is the word of God. And that's the difference between Memra and Logos. So you're basically following a Greek understanding, and I'm trying to bring you back to the Hebrew understanding. But the Hebrew understanding of God's word is not that God's word is a book. God's word, even in the Hebrew, is, is, an act, is active, is an active person who is right, doing right, things, right. who's talking. It's not, it's it, not a written exactly. book. Exactly. The point, yeah, as I said, Jesus is God's actions on earth. But Jesus you're saying is not that God's actions on earth. Jesus is God's actions on earth. Yeah, so I understand that. But just like, look, listen, okay. you're saying that God's action is is mm -hmm. without without mind, basically. It's just his, I guess, his power going forth. It's not, but it doesn't have a mind of its own, Pretty right? Much. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's, that's why Jesus said he didn't know what's going to go on. Jesus said, I don't know what's happening. That. I asked the Father. He said that, was it 19, 17 times? I don't know. I, no. I don't know what's going on. I asked the Father. The Father's no, greater than me. I don't. And, and no, you can stipulate. No. 
You know, you can stipulate I'm right. Oh, okay. So, like, for example, times. I, I need you to give us. I just need you to give us a verse. Only the Father knows. I need you to give I us a verse. The will of the Father. That's exactly. Just, what Go ahead and try. I just need you to give us a verse that says Jesus is saying, "I don't know anything." Bible verse. There's the Father. Yeah, just just pull up one so I can see where you're going from. Because typically, what he's saying, what I give you, I get from the Father. He's not claiming uh, ignorance or that he doesn't have access to it. That's typically the way the translations I have read, but uh, let's, he said John 5.30, let's pull hmm. that up. Like, no, that has nothing to do with Jesus saying he doesn't know anything. Like, for example, Matthew, I believe it's Matthew 11, verse 27. Jesus literally says that okay. he is the only one who knows the Father, and the Father knows him, hmm. is the only one that knows him, okay. right? All right. That's it. So in order to know God, be the only one to know God. You have to have one. You have to have a, a mind of your own. That n number two, your mind has to be infinite for you to know God fully. You cannot. No infinite mind can comprehend God. But Jesus says he does. Jesus says he comprehends God. Okay. So he's not. He he's never demonstrated that he. Thing. Yeah, the whole thing, John. The whole thing, brother. Okay. All right, but um. You know, as I said, I wasn't really prepared for all this, but um, he does say that multiple times. I did a presentation on this in front of uh, my submitter friends. Um, yeah, submitter friends? And um, What are submitter really friends? So, yeah, so what are submitter they're, they're friends? They're kind of Muslims. Some they're Muslims. kind of Muslims. Kind of Muslims. Kind of Muslims. Kind of Muslims. I'll just say what, that. What are... um, Okay. If, if you Google submitter, you'll find out exactly who they are. Okay. They're uh, they're a cult based in um, Tucson. But anyway, they're a cult. Should okay. be careful, a but, cult. Um, but yes, I did okay. a whole um. Must I, whole... Yeah, I just don't want to straw man our Muslim but, friends yeah. on stage. Um, they would yeah, not I did say... it in front of. Um... Yeah, they would not say that that's an Islamic group. Just I just don't want to. To, to straw man them, but I don't think Muslims would say that many cult is as okay. Okay, so you're familiar with have, okay. Anyway, I have Probably. I have the target. Um, I have the target but, here. Yes. Anyway, hey John, John, you mind if I read the target right here for you? Okay, I'm trying to get it up on the screen, but I, I'm having trouble trying to get it from my phone to this. But this is what the target okay. says. Okay. It's Genesis one, guys. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna find a way to get this on the screen too, so that we can all we can all see it. But okay. <clears throat> it says so. From the beginning, with 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 wisdom, thus. Hold on, I'm sorry, bro. This is this is tripping. <laughs> what just happened? You're just getting so big, Avery, that you need a producer. You can't be like. Us and just do your own stream like that. You need somebody behind Bro. that to help throw that up for you. Man, I need. <laughs> Man, I I, I should have I shouldn't have sought refuge, James. It doesn't want me to. It doesn't want to work right now. Um, is it John or is it Stan? Because I thought you wrote in the. I'm a bit confused on that as well. Is it... It's John. It's John. You you muted, brother. Either way, um. Well, for okay. a long time, I went by my middle name, Stan, because um, my first name is actually John, but when I, um, but I go by John now. Um, okay. Are, John are, you on so, are you on social media? To be. Are you on um, social media? And my dad's name is John. And I changed cool. because um, I was nine years old and um, my neighbor was named John, my cousin was named John, my uncle was named John. So you thought you'd stand uh, yes, out by John being Stan? Stanley, John oh. Stanley Urquhart, yes. Oh, makes sense. Uh, are you on uh, social media, Stan? Mm -hmm. Like Twitter or Instagram? Sorry, I can't hear you, mate. Good way to put it. I like that. Yes, oh, okay. John Stanley Urquhart. Yeah, you can call me either one. Just don't call okay. me for dinner. <laughs> no. Are you on social media? All, all American joke. That's an American joke. Um, but um, are you friendly Muslim then? She's talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah friendly Muslim talking, mate. 
Um, are you on social media at all? Friendly Muslim who's talking. Yes, yes, yes. John Stanley Urquhart. I think maybe. I and think maybe uh, yeah, Avery can up, give you. But... Avery can show you where I am. So. Um, oh, yeah, friendly Muslim, is he popping for I, you? I I'm not Avery, sure so if he I hears you. Yeah, he seems to reverb a little bit, or he's but yeah. looping. Uh, ain't nothing else. Because I, I know you've asked him a few questions, and I know he's he's not the kind of person to try to ignore you. I just think I there's a connection about, issue. Yeah. Okay, can you connect with me on social media? We can chat. We can chat. We can do the site. We can chat. You got a, face, you got a Facebook friend in Muslim? I'm on uh, Twitter or uh, Instagram mainly. So um, if uh, he wants to reach okay. out, I'd like. I mean, I want I want to uh, connect with All you right, also. So, um, so yeah, I was about to say, like you never, you never. Yeah. You know. So you're a friendly Muslim. Yeah. So at and then the number one friendly Muslim on I'm Twitter. On, I'm, I'm really only on um on Facebook. And a pro tip for you: if you're having connection issues, and pro meaning oh. someone else gave it to me, turn your camera off, and then it'll take less okay. uh, bandwidth, and then uh, your audio may improve too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as I was reading the targums, my it's it's <laughs> started messing up. This is hilarious. Okay, and you're recommending that to me then, correct? Yeah. All right, I'm stopping the cam. Well, that seems well. In the meantime, I'll read okay. a quote from Chloe. Chloe said, "Quran and clear in the same sentence." Yeah, that's better. Only makes sense when not is in the middle. Repent and come home to the true Jesus revealed in the Bible, friendly Muslim and John. I believe that was directed towards you guys. Thank you, Chloe Wake. What are you telling me to come back to? Well, to well, I mean, that's, that's Jesus. A, that was sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the true Jesus cannot contradict the Old Testament. That's my point about then, the true Jesus. But 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 the Isa of the Quran contradicts the Old Testament. How how do you hold that view? No, it doesn't. How so? Uh, okay. So how so? Um, do you yeah yeah, yeah. Create Let, let's life, for it. example? That would be a good one to go to. Folding as objects out of clay breathing the breath of life into them and then they fly in the old testament um god does that not contradict how does it not that okay i think i got it. the bible oh never mind or the old testament okay i got it guys it says i'm not going to touch it all right the targum it says I touched it. Good Lord. It says, I have no idea why it's doing this. Never mind. I'm going to just skip it. Anyway, it attributes the, the Mimra, the word of the Lord, for creating, for speaking. Um, the, the, the light into the world for uh, creating mankind in, in his image and communicate communicating with uh, Yahweh that's what it, that's how the Targums translate Genesis 1 and so this idea that the Mimra or the word of God the word of Yahweh is just his actions but not um, doesn't have a mind not a, is not personable uh, is not according to the ancient uh, Hebrew understanding of, of the word of God. Hmm. I have to go back to the Jewish encyclopedia and quote that, because that's where I'm getting my understanding of uh, the concept of Memra. And they're not a monolith, I'll say that. So well, I, I wouldn't be surprised to find different things. I, this is just the stuff I find. Like okay. for, uh, We also have like, okay, we got Genesis, I believe it's 12. Genesis 12 where the word of the Lord appears to Abraham or Abram at the time. You familiar mm -hmm. with that? 
Okay, that's where the angels appeared to Abraham. No, Correct. not that one. Not that one. No. This 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 one is before this. So uh, the oh, angels okay. appear to Abraham in um the angels okay. appear to Abraham in uh okay. chapter 18. All right. This this is chapter 12. <clears throat> Let me get this for you. Okay. Where the word of Yahweh appears to Abraham and starts speaking, okay. pulls him out, is talking to him, interacting with him. Okay. And 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 uh, Abraham calls the word of Yahweh God. Okay. Okay, so let's see here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Abraham calls the word of God. Okay. All right. Let me get this for you really quick, my friend. One second. So yeah, well, the Jewish concept that. Um, God is above everything. God is above him. Um, that God is above everything that um, is totally consonant with the Muslim idea that God just says be it. It is. So, you know, and practically every Jew will recognize that our theology is virtually identical to the Jewish theology. Um, that's a that's a pretty bold claim. They won't make that, but. We need to we need to cover one thing just for the viewing audience too. Well, Avery's looking that up. So, in Jewish tradition, okay. they don't believe that God gave them a preserved message, but a preserved interpretation method. So what that means is each generation is allowed to reinterpret the scriptures to fit that current generation. Interesting. That's, so that sounds like a very reformed position. It's it's modern. So if you ask Jewish rabbis, they'll tell you that it's their right and that God gave them this methodology and that they don't believe that they're violating anything from God. But the problem is, is that what they re, what they're reinterpreting it for this generation isn't always what the original meaning was. So if a Jewish person today says, hey, your theology lines up perfectly with what we believe today. You should be very, very afraid because they have reinterpreted it and reinterpreted it to fit the time period. Hmm. So you're so, saying that you're saying that at one point in Jewish belief, um, you're saying that at one point in Jewish belief they believed that God was a man, and then and then in uh, numbers they decided he wasn't. No, that's not what I'm claiming at all. So that's okay. kind of a strong man of my position. What I'm saying is that what you were introducing, saying that theology lines up mm -hmm. more with Islam, I'm warning you to be careful with that because if you talk to somebody who's practicing what the interpretation is today, then you should be mm -hmm. worried because that interpretation is not the one that they've done then. So basically, you're saying that Islam doesn't line up with the earliest Jewish interpretation. Now, what I am saying is throughout the Old Testament, there's a physical mm -hmm. Yahweh and a non-physical Yahweh. Uh, Jewish people in this time period would have had mm -hmm. no issue with God having a physical presence. But in Islam, God cannot interact within our, our realm. Within He can't enter into our reality. He can manifest his uh, not his presence but almost like a representation of his presence, but he can't okay. interact in that sense. So the theologies differ greatly. Now, the move you would want to make as a Muslim is to say that the Jewish scriptures are all corrupt, the Christian scriptures are corrupt, and you just believe yours, but you can't maintain this connective tissue because it's not there. Hmm. Okay. So a couple of things. So you're basically saying, so you're going back to saying that when the Jews talk about the nature of God, since the nature of God changed in Judaism, that the Jews don't understand their own religion. I mean, is that what you're saying here? No, that's once again a straw man of what I said. What I said is okay. they don't believe that they were given one interpretation to maintain forever. They believe they were given an interpretation hmm. method, meaning a methodology to take God's word and interpret it to make it applicable for each generation. It's why when, for example, 
um, after Jesus and Christianity started taking off, Isaiah 53 mm -hmm. was a messianic verse. The early Jewish uh, sects would have completely seen that as messianic. Later on, because of Christians saying, hey, this fits Jesus, they then reinterpret it to fit the generation that they're in to say it's no longer messianic. And they believe they have the right to do that because they believe the method has been preserved. Let me ask you, so is there any proof that um, Isaiah 53, I think that, um, is there any proof that Isaiah 53 of the thousands of pages, I think there was one person who had one verse in the thousands of pages of exegesis, exegesis on Isaiah 53 that would indicate it was messianic. So what is that verse? <laughs> so do you have that? Or is this just an assertion that's not supported? No, th this is something that that anybody can go look up. I'm not saying that the early okay. Jewish conception would say, hey, this fits Jesus Christ. But when they okay. saw that Christians were reading this, it's messianic, right. it's, it's writing towards the Messiah, then they mm -hmm. wanted to reinterpret it to fit the generation as a way to combat okay. losing Jewish converts to Christianity. Now, you can, okay. you can find a lot of this when you're leg working. Okay. That's interesting. So, but you're not going to, you're not going to give me any exact statements then. Correct. Like from Isaiah 50, uh, that particular I verse. Mean, he, was pierced any for our he was crushed for our inequities. The weight okay. and sin and death was upon him. Right. Um, there's well, all Isaiah kinds of throwbacks between it. Okay. So Isaiah 53, as I understand it, is metaphorical. Um, and the um, idea, one of the main reasons why the Jews reject Jesus is because Jesus Christ is considered a human sacrifice. Human sacrifice is an abomination. That's not. And so therefore, Jews cannot accept human sacrifice. So, so Isaiah within, 53 is a, is a metaphor that could be considered metaphor. You know, it's like the metaphorical idea that um, that uh, one of the guys in the Quran saw the um, saw the sun setting into a muddy spring. You know, that's a metaphorical statement. I, I, um, I get what you're so saying, Isaiah but it's... If it's taken as messianic, um, would violate the specific Jewish commandments against including human sacrifice in their religion if it's being applied to jesus what i'm telling you is that uh, that is not the case for the earliest jewish sources um, i'm trying to get something up on my computer just to give you a link if i can but what what right. happens within history and they'll tell you this too just go find a jewish rabbi and ask him the question just like this say uh, are you saying to me that you have the exact same belief structure as the early Jewish conception? Or are you telling me that God gave you a method to interpret for each generation? I, I'm, I'm very confident they're going to tell you the second. Most of the reform rabbis will. I'll, agree. I'll, I'll bring that statement. But um, if you're talking about talking about real Jews who actually believe in God, no, I pretty much go with my Amanita's 13 principles. So you're saying that um, basically Judaism isn't founded. You can, you can basically read anything you want into it. So you're saying, so you're saying these specific things aren't Judaic. So. No, I, I'm very, saying that. I'm saying that we have two different historical approaches. Theirs is an interpretation method that changes with mm -hmm. the generation. The Christian method is to go back to the earliest sources and use those mm -hmm. and then see where they speak of Jesus. In that case, that's what we're doing. We're not going back and saying, hey, you need to reinterpret these this way. We're not allowed to do that in the same way. We're not allowed to reject the Old Testament or any of the New mm -hmm. Testament. Um, now, if you're Jewish, right. you're in the same boat. 
But if you're Muslim, you're allowed to reject the Torah and you're allowed to reject the New Testament books as well. Correct. Well, we're allowed to cons we're allowed to consider that there are corruptions inside them. Yes. Um, so if that answers your question, yes. Guys, but, um, I gotta wrap. I gotta wrap it up here. I gotta wrap it okay. up here. Okay. Can I get two minutes of your time, just uh, because obviously Sam was here. Um, what does he want for a debate? Does he want it moderated? So, or because look, I know they won't come to him on Skype or or whatever. Would he go to Hamza's den if, say, like you were with him also, and it was timed maybe so people get a fair amount of time? I don't, I don't think so. But I, can I can I suggest an alternative? Mm -hmm. um, e. A. Dawa uh, and me have known each other for a few years. Now we fight sometimes like cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe if we could do something as a Christian and a Muslim moderator. Now I can't speak for Sam though. I'm just throwing this out as an idea. Mm -hmm. I can't say that Sam would say yes or no. But I th think Sam is not going to go on EF Dawa where they have the mods and can kick and mute him. I think he was looking at Hamza's. Well, Hamza. He, he challenged Hamza when he came on earlier. So I mm -hmm. think he wants he, uh, Hamza. That's isn't Hamza still associated with that, or is he no longer? No, no. Yeah. They're they're no longer associated. I'm gonna leave. Okay. Like you. Yeah. Uh, Stan. You don't need to be any more brother. Any of... Yo, can you yes. connect? What's the best yes. way to connect with you? I'd like to uh, talk to you about your Judaism. He's on. He's on Facebook a lot. Okay. Um, what well, under the name? Muslim talking. Yeah. Urquhart, Muslim. you are. I'm in the side. I put my uh, the exact spelling is Urquhart. You sound British, so Urquhart mm -hmm. is a very British name. Okay, Scottish can you name. just type it? Oh, okay, John Stanley so Urquhart. John okay, that's... Stanley Urquhart. On Facebook. It's up there. Yeah, I typed it already, but I can do it again. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yes. All right. I'll make a note. Anyway, yeah, I'm normally at EA Dower. Um, right. Later on, they might be going live, um, or Issa Dow. So if you're still awake, pop by. Yeah, I wanted to mention this too, friendly Muslim, because I know you are going to EA Dow later. I don't want to keep Ava any longer. Tell him that if he calls into Sam, he can go live on Sam's platform, and Sam and him could have a conversation. Yep. Yeah, the only thing I'm finding with Sam, and if I'm Here's just honest, right, there's a lot of come here. Huh? Why won't Issa come here like you do? Who Isa? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Isa's got a different temperament, bro. He, he, that, he's, he, that is. I think if if you're gonna come up, like I saw you in the chat yesterday, uh, then go and speak to uh, EA Dower. I think uh, that's a different temperament that could facilitate a conversation. Um, <laughs> so that's what what I'm saying. You know, everyone's different, and diff everyone has different levels of patience. So you know, and I'm a more mild mannered easy go say hello to everyone keep the peace you know encourage dialogue that's my kind of role so that's what i do um <laughs> yeah because i i even go to ex-muslim channels i go to atheist channels and you know speak and have cordial conversations so that that's what i enjoy doing um yeah i mean we can we can talk about it or um I, the only thing with sam is obviously if he's doesn't cut anybody off i think i think both sides would want a fair moderator that's all i'm saying so if it's timing that all right someone gets 10 minutes and someone gets 10 minutes um or five minutes and there's a structure where people can't cut each other off i think that might be beneficial that that's all i'm thinking and that's why i threw out my services as a christian and ea dow and i have done things together in the past he could be the second moderator you could have one christian one muslim or yeah, that, God that Logic could, could be a moderator for Sam. God Logic is good at that. Yeah, and EA could do the same for the Muslim side too, and then you know find a. I I think you should find a a um, a, a format that Sam would agree to. If um yeah, God Logic, bro, what what we'll do? I mean, we could reach out. Um, what's the best way to connect with you on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? I'm on I'm on Instagram too. So since you're on Instagram, we can connect on Instagram. Cool. What's the um? Give me a second. I'll get it for you. Oh, you can like it's um. What am I on here? Hold on. Let me check my Insta. 
You can find me at. Oh, this guy logic. That's it. At God logic. Yep. That's it. I thought I was. Yeah, God logic GL. God logic GL. Oh, I got you. All right, cool. Okay. All right. Uh, I've just messaged Anything you. Anything else so. um, before I leave? No, this is it. Uh, we'll be back on next Tuesday, John. So if you have time to continue and stuff like that, okay. or you you know want a topic that you want to continue on, we can, man. And uh, I really okay. enjoyed your your presence on here, man. You made you was it was fun. Okay, so far, so, so, time we... so um, I'll I'll look in more into Memra then, mm-hmm. and I might even sing you my Grease parody. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yes. Yeah. Actually, no, definitely send me that. I want that. I definitely want that. Okay. <laughs> All right. But, okay, uh, great. I want, to, yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming on. Thank you. Uh, right, for thank James you. is Tired for visiting, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe mm-hmm. to James is Tired. He has a YouTube channel that, you know, where he also hosts discussions and live streams and things of that nature. He's awesome for that. So um, definitely subscribe to James is Tired. What's up, Travis? You too late, man. <laughs> You're late, bro. You got to come on earlier, man. We'll be back next week. We'll be back next week, brother. Um, but, but yeah, I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined. Thank you to the moderators who keeping up with the chat when I can't. And uh, this really is a, you know, a team effort. So God bless everyone here. God bless everyone. Keep us in your prayers. Pray for uh, the Muslims that came up today, that God touches them, touches their heart, that they, he awakens them to the truth so that they come to the true Christ who can save their souls and give them salvation. Okay? Um, this is it. Just wanted to thank you, Avery, for that and say, Allahu Akbar, may Allah guide you, my brother. Assalamu alaikum. Take care, man. Take care. Peace of Christ, everyone. All right, y'all. This is it. End of the chat. Oh my god Logic